two deep. Bill Bailey, 21, and Bruce Presley, 44, waiting at the five-yard line. And we are underway in New Jersey. Low line drive, bouncing kick. Presley got some speed. Brought down at the 27-yard line. And now for tonight's McDonald's starting lineups. Brian Forte will open at quarterback. The coaches are hoping he'll be more relaxed tonight after gaining confidence in the fourth quarter last week. Jim Garantano set a school record a year ago with 62 catches. Number one in the conference, he's on a similar pace this year, 11 catches in two games. And Travis Broadbent anchors a good offensive line. The senior center has gone from 227 to 280 pounds in three years. Right now, he is playing with a bad knee, and we'll have to wait and see if he can stay on the field all night. Dorsey is the single setback, and he'll get the call. Picks up about four. There's a flag down on the play. Only the second carry of the year for the senior fullback. Tom Tamrath, the referee, and Rutgers will find itself in a hole early. Two-thirds of Pitt's defensive line from 1991 is now in the NFL. Noseman Tom Bart, the only returning full-time starter. Inside linebacker Charles Williams should lead the team in tackles for the second straight year. He is the only upperclassman among the starting linebackers. Lex Perkins, the only senior in the secondary. He's been a big hitter for the team. Now the coaches are hoping he will be a big playmaker. First and 15, and Rutgers has been averaging nine penalties a game. Mitter is the single setback. And Mitter will get the carry, turns the corner. Across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And, Craig, I think that's what Rutgers needs early, the big play. It gives confidence to the tight end, to the offensive line, gives them a chance to get on somebody and do a good job. Outside, he's got to get a job. He's got to come in there at the top of your screen and turn him. Pernetti does that, and Mitter, with good speed, gets to the secondary. And if they can get into the secondary, that'll take the pressure off Brian Forte and his play calling. The strong safety, Doug Whaley, had to come up and make the hit. Second down and two for Rutgers from its own 35. And Pitt jumps offside. They'll whistle the play dead. And it should be an automatic first down. The right tackle, Jeff Esters. Brian Forte, last week against Colgate, did the same thing. Really good with his cadence. For a young player that hasn't been in the game that much, that's one of the key things that he has going for him right now. Of course, he was one of the most highly recruited quarterbacks coming out of high school. Went to quarterback U at Miami. How does he end up back home in New Jersey? Well, he wanted to come back home to his to his family and play at Rutgers just up the street. Plus, Gino Toretto starts at Miami. Not a bad decision by Dennis Erickson either. And, of course, Forte was upset that he did not win the quarterback job because he thought he had outperformed Toretta. Obviously, some people in Miami had different thoughts. Automatic first and ten for Rutgers across the room 40. And Forte to throw for the first time. The quick out. And he has Garantano, his favorite receiver, knocked out of bounds by Derek Parker. And we talked about what Rutgers needed early. Forte certainly needs a couple of completions early. Three-step drop. He saw the pressure coming from the outside, realizes eight men are up in that box, and he'll see that all night. Garantano, a dependable receiver. Three steps, get rid of the football, high percentage. Second and five for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Mitter. Not much there. The center of the pit defense ganging up on him. And there is the young man that Craig talked about earlier, the red shirt freshman quarterback. A lot of athletic skills, and he came in and showed them off last week, didn't he? His ability to move. He's probably a 4-5 in the 40-yard dash compared to Forte's 4-8. So he gets out of situations that Forte physically can't get out of. And right now, both of them are scrambling type quarterbacks. Third and three for Rutgers. Five-man rush. Mitter out of the backfield. First down and more. Finally knocked out of bounds. Lex Perkins hit him, and then Hayes Clark, number 43, finished it off. But it's a gain of 13. 
Second time he's had a chance to drop back three steps and release the football. It's a confidence builder for him right now. High percentage. A man that can catch the ball midder out of the backfield, you spread him out there, and you know that those eight people are going to be there. And until Pitt gets out of that, they should three-step drop and get it to the flats. This is a defense that was chewed up a week ago. And Rutgers right now having no trouble moving the ball. They're at the pit 40, opening possession of the game. Forte with time. A flag is down. And they throw it to Avena. You saw the tailback, Mitter, step up. And they'll call him for motion. You have to be set for a second before the ball is snapped. And it didn't look like he was set, although the flag was late. At this point, Pitt's defensive line, it's almost like they've conceded that he's going to three-step drop, and they're not really getting any kind of vertical penetration. Illegal motion, offense. Repeat first down. Man on your left, Stan Parrish, offensive coordinator for Rutgers. He's the guy that's trying to control Forte and Ray Lucas. First and 15, the Scarlet Knights send two wide receivers to the near side, mid of the setback. And Forte will roll to the near side. Rifles this one too high, intended for Garantano and good coverage by Vernon Lewis. Right on top of him. Brian Forte said that he was going to come out in the ball game. And he was going to smile. He was going to enjoy himself. And I, in our meeting with him yesterday, we kind of felt like it was a forced issue. He was saying, hey, I'm going to smile. But he, he wasn't sure that that was going to work for him. And with a three-step drop and the confidence that that can instill in him, that'll help keep him at least in the ball game for another quarter. Here's what Rutgers has done so far. They say they wanted a balanced offense. You can't get much more balanced than that. Everybody jumps again, and Forte applauding like he was able to draw the pit defensive line off. That was Tom Barnt, the nose man. But the call will go against Rutgers. Offensive lineman and the teammates, they've got to realize that he's got a hard cadence when he goes to the line of scrimmage. He's going to bark at them. If he's going on two, he's going to give them a hard first count. They've got to be smart enough to realize that and not jump themselves and use that as a big ally for them. That's the third penalty on Rutgers, all movement. Watch his head when he makes his bark here. He really comes down with it. And that's going to force a lot of the pit defenders all night to come over. They got to sit in there. Looked like the Panthers may have gotten away with one there. Yeah, sure did. Rutgers facing a second and 20 now, or they could have called it on Brian Forte for the head snap. Four-man rush. Forte had that one tipped at the line of scrimmage. And it looked like Dell Seagraves, red shirt freshman outside the linebacker, up on the line of scrimmage, got the hand up and knocked it away. Pitt coaches said that they were going to come into the ball game, put Dell Seagraves down number 91, and they wanted him to get vertical, get up the field, and put your hands in the air. That's what they have schooled him all week, and the man is a good student. Did he listen? And it's tough when you take that three-step drop. If people do get any penetration, they are right in your face. Third and 20. Forte to the shotgun. Here comes the blitz, and he'll run. Forte with room. Trying to get to the sticks, and he is just shy of a first down outside the 30. A gain of 19. And now it's decision time for the Scarlet Knights. Gutsy move by Forte. Here's the play, and it's a great decision. I don't know if it was the quarterback drawing. So look at the center field. Nobody's there. He's going to drop back and go with it. Forte, once again, 4-8 speed. Not bad speed at all. Nobody in center field to do that. Takes advantage of what a defense has given him. And you have to love it. Doug Graber says, let's go for it. Fourth and inches. Opening possession of the game. He's trying to establish this program. Quarterback keeper Forte lost the football on the snap, and it will go over on downs. Boy, really takes the wind out of the sails. You have all the fans on their feet. You make a courageous decision, and then you fumble the snap from center. But it's the right decision. They had to do that. They haven't beaten Pitt. They've got to do something spectacular here. He's going to go with a quarterback draw, or just a sneak there and try to get him behind his man. Inexperienced 
You betcha. You. you gotta have composure. Panthers come out with all everything Alex Van Pelt. And the Panthers want to hammer it. Mark diving across the 35 to about the 37. Pitts quarterback Alex Van Pelt making his 37th straight start tonight. He'll break another record of the legendary Dan Marino. Sure-handed Chris Boyer, a favorite target last year against Rutgers. Six catches, a career-high 116 yards. And a veteran offensive line, Gary Gorajewski at right, uh, right guard, an excellent technician. The senior has started at left guard the last two years. Second and five for the Panthers. Martin again. Slipped an ankle tackle across the 40, near a first down at the 41-yard line. On defense, Rutgers is small up front. Their best run stopper, junior Andrew Beckett. He's tied for the team lead in tackles. Sean Williams, a Butkus Award candidate, three sacks this year after a team leading 13 last season, fourth all-time at Rutgers. The veteran in the secondary, senior Marshall Roberts, the left corner, also one of the country's best punt return men. Panthers, third and short. Vince Williams into the ball game at fullback, and he'll get the carry, and Williams piling ahead for the first down. They'll mark it out near the 43-yard line. Exactly what Pitt wanted to do. They wanted to come out in the ball game, use that offensive line and their experience, their demeanor up there, and to kind of pound Rutgers and let them know, hey, we, we've been around the game before, fellas. You're supposed to bow down to us. And Alex Van Pelt. Of course, wants to throw the ball a little bit. He is only 31 yards shy of breaking Dan Marino's all-time passing yardage mark. First throw complete in the flat. A little flanker screen. Midfield and more. They got it out to Bill Davis. George Stewart, one of the linebackers, had to make the stop. Davis's third catch of the year. Gain of 11. Running this type play here, you've got a soft secondary coverage. Bill Davis, number 49 up top, one step, get the football. Nice job of his teammates getting out there, giving him the, the 29, Curtis Martin, with a great block there. Sure was. Stewart playing with two broken hands, casts on each. You sure find out who your friends are in a hurry. <laughs> Martin on the handoff from Van Pelt. He's averaging nearly 100 yards a game, really stuck as he got to the 40-yard line. Free safety Malik Jackson made the tackle, and this young man was the key to the recruiting effort in New Jersey. Everybody wanted him. When he signed to come to Rutgers, a lot of people followed. They'd say that he's got that linebacker mentality just in a defensive back body, and he comes up, and he wears people out, and that'll be important for him to do that, but he also has got to watch that play action. Hey, but that is a huge free safety. Second and four. Jermaine Williams checks into the game for the first time. Tipped away. What a play by Van Pelt. He was going to make sure there was no interception. Van Pelt was wrapped up by Sean Williams, who more often than not will be in Van Pelt's face tonight. The blitzing linebacker. And Van Pelt at least had the presence of mind to make sure he knocked it away. He's all the way over on the loud side. Now, he'll come in, and once again, he knows that this back is going to be out there. He's going to be going. He's got to get his hands up. He doesn't do that. This is a big play. Boy, Van Pelt showing you that thinking ability. But now the Panthers facing a third and four. The blitz, and Martin will get the call, and he is very close to a first down at the 36. Martin out of Pittsburgh, 6 feet, 190, a sophomore. And you see him mark it about a yard short. So now the decision goes to Paul Hackett on fourth and a yard. Well, if he doesn't go for it here, then he's saying to his offensive lineman, fellas, I know what y'all wanted to accomplish, but I'm not going to give you a chance to do it. And he has been able to move that Rutgers line so far. So both coaches on their opening possessions, going for it on fourth and short. Williams and Martin, the backs. And second effort, let's see where they mark it. It will be very close to the stick. Second effort by Williams. Oh, and this is close. 
That fullback has got to be patient now. This is a timing play. He's got to give the quarterback time to get around. He's lined up too close to the quarterback, and he almost misses the exchange. Now, the key here, where does his knees go? See, at first, I thought it was a bad spot. But the ball goes down, and then he hops up towards the line. This could be a big play for that Rutgers defense. And they hold. Well, how's that for a couple of opening series? A confidence builder for Rutgers all the way because they truly stopped Pitt on that one. We've got a timeout, 9.04 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Know what's wrong with the world today? No one cares about doing a good no job anymore. No one cares anymore. about doing a good job anymore. Napkin? Thanks. Quick fix, slap it together. Refill? Thanks. Courtesy, efficiency, punctuality. Is that too much to ask? Nah. Hot food and fast, friendly service guaranteed. What you want is what you want. ESPN's Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation and your local Chrysler Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, and Eagle dealers. Rick Rachel, the de defensive coordinator for Rutgers, has to be very proud of his kids because they stepped up and stopped a bigger Pitt football team on fourth and one and got the ball back. Nothing like success to breed confidence. And it does for Rutgers, especially a team that has lost nine times, never beaten Pitt. They need that kind of opening series, both offensively and defensively. They did a good job offensively earlier. They did. They were able to move. Both teams had the ball eight plays on their opening drives. Mitter is the tailback. He'll get the toss and a flag. I don't think they beat the 25 second clock. Or they moved again. That is the fourth procedure slash movement penalty against Rutgers in the first quarter. You can't continue to put yourself in a hole like that. No, because now you're first and 15. You got Brian Forte, who you're trying to get a little confidence in and giving good situations to stay with. And that was Jim Garitano, number 18, the guy that's not supposed to make mistakes. Forte so far looking rather steady. They're probably extremely pleased with his level of play so far. <laughs> waiting for it. Rutgers offense, one thing that we'll try to show you throughout the night is they do so many different families, as they're called, or sets or formations. They'll go two tight, two wide receivers. They'll go three tights. The, they'll mix it up so many different ways, and they'll keep the same personnel in there and has, ask them to do different things. Does this lead to the number of procedure penalties? No, I think that's just concentration. Second and 15, no gain on the last play. Forte with a short drop again. Gets it out to Brantley, and Brantley gets back near the original line of scrimmage. Doug Whaley came up from a safety spot and made the tackle. Brantley out of Teaneck, New Jersey, and that's the key to building this program to where they want it to be is getting some of these outstanding New Jersey prep players to stay at home. And Doug Graber has done a fine job of that his first three years. A lot of people don't even know that Rutgers is the State University of New Jersey. Third and 11. Four-man rush. Floated down the sideline and too high for Garantano. Lex Perkins, the free safety, was coming over the cover, but he had no chance. Of course, you go back to the first play when they jump off sides. First and 15, it's going to be tough for them with Forte to have any kind of success when he's under those kind of odds. David Lippitz will come in having a very good first two games of the season, second in the conference, averaging 44-2. And David Natoli. He is back, standing in his own 25-yard line. Panthers with nine men now on the line of scrimmage. No big rush. 
Although one man almost got a piece of it. Short kick, and flags will go down on this one. This will be interference with the receiver because Natoli never had a chance to make the catch. If you can believe it, he throws a marker. The referee throws his bean bag, and he doesn't. Well, he threw the bean bag. He didn't. Didn't look like a flag he threw. Uh, he had to call the penalty yeah. though. I mean, there was a clothesline there. He's <laughs> outlawed 15 years ago, and Natoli gets killed. You got to give him two yards. You got to give him a chance. He just didn't realize it was coming down that short of a ball. See what happens to Lippitz, the punter. Nice little acting job as he got touched, and that's about all. So the Panthers will get a break on this one, a short kick and the penalty. Interference with the opportunity to take the catch against the kicking team. There was contact made. Automatic first down. Was there ever. So maybe that's what the Panthers will need to get on track. And look where they're taking the football. What's going on here, fellas? I think I think Rutgers is confused right now. The I ball think the officials are confused. Well, I got to throw it off on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were down at the Rutgers 30-yard line. The ball ended up at midfield, but it's got to come back and the infraction go from the spot of the exactly. foul. Exactly. I mean, I know Natoli got hit hard, but 45 yards is a little steep. Now take it out to midfield. And I think Doug Graber is questioning the spot of the foul where it originally occurred. Rutgers has now been penalized five times for 35 yards in the first period. And we'll take a timeout here at Rutgers Stadium. 7.34 to go first quarter. Rutgers and Pitt scoreless. Home 44 to 6. Then he gets a short week. I'm not so sure that the that the coaching staff didn't want the short week more than the players did to come back and redeem themselves. Doesn't give you much time to uh, dwell on your miseries. You just look ahead to the next game and get ready for it. And right now the Panthers with the ball just into Rutgers territory. First and ten. Curtis Martin as they go back to the ground game. And Martin first down and more. Cut it outside down to the Rutgers 40 yard line and now they'll mark him just outside the 40. Sean Williams chased him out of bounds. Alex Van Pelt you see the uh, device on his right elbow. He had surgery over the summer. Uh, he says 100 percent from that but he gained a lot of weight missed all spring sat around during the summer and actually got up to around what 260 pounds still looks like he's got a lot of bubble gum in his cheeks. <laughs> Paul Hackett says he has not been sharp as yet, but make no mistake, this is a quality quarterback. Martin trying to get the first down. Dances his way across the 40. Doug Adkins, the strong safety, came up to make the stop. Martin already 29 yards on six carries. One. Said he's in the best shape of his life, worked very hard in the offseason to get ready for this year. Martin should have a great game tonight because of Van Pelt's play action fake that play there the secondary really didn't come up to support at all they're so worried about him pulling the ball getting back in the pocket and throwing it deep on them well with his numbers and his reputation he could come out and hand the ball off 45 times in a row and they'd still be back there it is a first down for the Panthers tough for Van Pelt last week he grew up in West Virginia rooting for the Mountaineers ended up moving to Texas and then being recruited by Pitt and he has had a field day against Rutgers, averaging more than 300 yards a game in his career. Give it to the fullback, and no chance at all for Vince Williams, who was tagged at the line of scrimmage. Our CFA Thursday night series will continue next week. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Craig James back in the studio as one of the mole people. They'll preview your college football weekend at 7.45 with a kickoff show. And then we go to Lawrence, Kansas, as California battles, get this, undefeated Kansas leading the nation in scoring. 55.5 points a game. Go Jayhawks. <laughs> what a great start for them.
played Tulsa this weekend. Van Pelt hands it off again. Jermaine Williams. The junior from Detroit, Michigan, stopped by George Stewart. He of the two broken hands. Boy, it's tough. I don't care linebacker mentality or not. If you have two broken hands, how do you grab anybody? Earlier in the game, he, had, he missed a tackle in the backfield on Curtis Martin because he couldn't wrap up. You just can't do it. That, I mean, linebackers are the kind of guys, they come out of the game and their fingernails are halfway laid back because they've held on to somebody trying to drag them down for dear life. Third and five for the Panthers. They'll go with three wide receivers. Van Pelt pump fake throws over the middle. Incomplete intended for Rob Coons, and the tight end couldn't hold it. Jameel Jackson, number 41, the closest defender, but a catchable ball for the senior from Brea, California. Well, he pump fakes up top. I thought he was going deep. Matter of fact, he might have had a chance, but he opens up by doing that. Coons. Coons has got to realize he's got that kind of quarterback that's really going to try to get him the ball and get him open, which the pump fake did. Fourth down, and the Panthers will try to pin Rutgers deep with a punt. Theodoro, who's had a brilliant opening couple of weeks, just got it into the end zone. Barely over the end line, kicked back. But Rutgers gets a break, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Of course, we told you that uh, the key to Rutgers and rebuilding this program, or should we say building this program, to the point where it can compete in this conference, to keep New Jersey players at home and look at the transfers that have come back to New Jersey from other programs. Of course, Forte, uh, the most storied after going to Miami, but he's got four starters among those six transfers, and that really helps the program, too. Well, a lot of those kids went to the South in just a different culture. They wanted to come back home. Forte remains at quarterback as Rutgers takes over at the corner. Forte trying to run out of trouble. Got about five and nailed out of bounds. Lex Perkins hit him after he had crossed the sideline. Tommy, I got a dead ball foul. Perkins, the big hitter in the secondary, did not think that time. And Forte looks like he's all right. Yeah, he looks like he's all right, but he really will learn a lesson once he gets into the review film. <laughs> once he breaks the pocket here, a nice job there. Now, when he gets over here, there's a man up the left side that is wide open. He's got to throw that football. And in my opinion, Ray Lucas right now is probably able to make that play. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's, that's college football, so he hadn't played in two years. He'll realize that uh, just because you get over in that white paint doesn't mean they won't hit you. And you really have to sympathize. And there is Lucas, the redshirt freshman, warming up on the sideline just in case. You have to feel for defensive players who nail a guy right at the sideline. Their job is to nail him. And I don't think they regret it. No, I don't <laughs> think so either. But first down, Rutgers after the penalty. Ball at the 40. Mitter. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Charles Williams, the junior out of Philadelphia, wrapped him up in a hurry. He's number 53, 245 pound inside linebacker. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor, what do you have? Hey guys, Pitt defensive line coach Tom Trichetta told his young defensive line, guys, we have to hit our rush lanes because we see Forte is checking into the three-step drop. If we get in our rush lanes, don't worry about getting to the quarterback. Get your hands up and don't let him tuck the ball and run. We'll watch them up front to make sure they stay in those lanes and keep Forte from taking the middle out. Back up here. Second and eight right now. Thanks, Jerry. Forte under some pressure this time. The out pattern nearly intercepted. That ball did not have a lot of juice on it and nearly picked up by Chris Hupko, the sophomore. This play has to be made. It has to be thrown a little bit sooner. Once he comes over here, he's got to get rid of the football because that gives that defensive back. He's telegraphing. It gives that DB a chance to come, come up on the ball. Now, Brantley is open. Throw the football. And the other thing, Brantley kept drifting into the secondary. He's got yep. to stay flat. That is a lot longer throw than it looks, and that ball stayed up in the air a long, long time. Third and eight now for the Scarlet Knights. Comes the blitz, Forte from behind, he's decked. And that was Gerald Simpson, the right outside linebacker. The red shirt freshman gets his first sack of the year, and he had a beat on Forte the whole way. 
Forte will need to realize it's a blitz. He doesn't look like he sees what's going on, and Simpson comes hard. He's got to know, hey, who was coming, because had he known, he'd have had happy feet and would have moved back up into the pocket instead of seven yards. He'd have been five steps. Lippitz to punt, and Craig Mitter, the running back that time, was guarding the right side, never saw the blitzer either. And Natoli, who was horse collared last time, waits inside his 30. Another bad kick. And Natoli touched it. And Rutgers battling for it. It looks like the Scarlet Knights have it. Now here's the tough part, digging to the bottom of the pile and finding out who does. And the Scarlet Knights have it. Well, the last time on the punt, Rutgers made the bad play. This time, Pitt made the bad decision. Natoli should have let it go. Natoli is schooled on this situation here. Ball hits the ground like that, which you don't want to have it happen, but it was a short kick. If you're going to touch that thing, man, you better make darn sure that you hold on to it. Get away from the football and realize it's going to go another five, eight yards and just let your offense get on the field. Special teams coach Amos Jones telling him precisely what Craig just told us. 4.02 to go. First big break of the ball game. Mitter trying to get outside to the 15-yard line, taken out of bounds by Lewis. Mitter's been able to get the corner a couple of times in this ballgame. He is their home run hitter. Five carries, 26 yards. Well, you don't think Doug Graver knows how much this means to this program. To be able to beat a team with the name of Pitt would be something huge for him. And yeah, something they haven't done, they'll have to do if they want to keep these New Jersey kids in state and attend Rutgers. Exactly. Second and a yard. No gamble here. They want the first down. And Mitter runs right over Gerald Simpson, who held on and brought him down. It is a first down for Rutgers. Tom Tumulty, an outstanding linebacker, hurt for the Panthers won't be able to play. Big East Rookie of the Year a year ago. He has a torn chest muscle. And that was a big loss for them uh, when you count the, the number of people they lost to uh, graduation in the NFL draft. Defensive coaches say that he was the glue to the puzzle. They've lost him, and that's why Rutgers should and has at times attempted tonight to run up the middle to test their merit. And right now, the Panthers have Jeff Esters, a fifth-year senior out of Dania, Florida, very slow getting up play a three-man front and those guys get hit an awful lot trying to keep people off of linebackers so they can make the tackles and Esther's being tended to hope you join us this Sunday night John Miller and Joe Morgan will be in San Francisco for what could be the last time the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Giants get together on the coast on America's Game of the Week at 8 o'clock a lot of history between those teams, and the Giants uh, might be moving to their third city. Esther's helped off the field. We have 350 and counting to go first quarter. Rutgers Stadium, and it is a first and 10 Rutgers in a scoreless game. Mitter. Lost his balance, dives inside the 10, covered by Vernon Lewis. Talked about all the families that Rutgers goes, that they'll go with. Right now they go with that three tight end look so they can play smash mouth football once they get in here. You know, the old TK Dorsey will go out and he's the guy that's down here. He's playing like a fullback. You got another tight end, you got a tight end there. That gives them that power offense that they can go in and get a surge inside the 10 yard line. And there was a seam there for Mitter but couldn't keep his balance on the grass field. Second and seven. Same formation, same play. No hole this time. Miller spun off the tackle. Inside the five to the four. He just wanted it more than the guys who were trying to tackle him. And do you wonder if Rutgers wants it more than Pitt right now? 
Replay here, you see a lot of effort. This is what makes a good ball carrier. Nobody's on his legs. Unless you get your arms around a running back's legs, he's not coming down. That's why he runs behind those shoulder pads, puts the helmet down. Watch when he breaks around the corner here. What's he going to give him? He's going with the head and the shoulder pads. He just wouldn't quit. Lewis and Perkins had to take him out of bounds. Third and two from the Panther four. Mitter again. And Pitt closed on that very well. Nothing. Doug Whaley came up to make the stop, along with Mike Halopin out of Apollo, Pennsylvania. There's Whaley, the safety. Boy, Whaley and these guys coming clean. Look at this up here at the top. He's going to come clean by himself. Now, a bootleg. Pull it. Get around the corner. You can maybe walk in as a quarterback. Rutgers has a decision to make on fourth and two. They have taken a timeout to talk over what is a critical decision to their program. STS. Yes. Rutgers at the pit floor. Craig James and I have been working together for about an hour. We're already going to have our first fight. I think they ought to kick the field goal here. I think you have to get the points. I know you disagree. Uh, they haven't ever beaten Pitt. They got to go for the touchdown. Two schools of thought here. You pull the ball and you roll the corner and you throw to the flat, or you have the hard cadence to try to get them off sides. If you don't, then you just come out and kick the field goal. Brantley and Garantano, their two best receivers, go to the left. Tata Brantley, it is incomplete, nearly picked off in the end zone by Vernon Lewis. Good coverage by the Panthers secondary, and Forte finally had to gun it into the end zone and try something. When I go for it, I stay with that three tight end look, and then I scramble. Now, Forte does a nice job of setting up behind his tackle over there, and there's just a little bit of opportunity for him there, but a nice job by Pitt's defense of staying with their men. Number 42 that time, Lewis was in the spot that he had to be with his hands on the ball. Nice job by Rutgers' offensive line, too. They gave Forte a lot of time. And you might wonder, no big deal about the dropped interception, but the difference is having it at the 20 or having it at the 4 where Pitt has to start now. And Van Pelt to throw from the end zone under some pressure. Got it out and dropped. Bobby Boykin, fourth string fullback. In for that play and lost it. And Alex Van Pelt, seldom when you get a chance to hit him. He's going to get back and throw on his time. 2.8, 2.9, the body tells him to get rid of it. He's throwing it whether the receiver's ready or not. Van Pelt only one of four, still needs 20 yards to pass Dan Marino. They give it to the fullback, Williams, and he plows his way up near the 10-yard line. Bodies flying everywhere. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, good news for the pit defense. Defensive end senior Jeff Esters a moment ago taken off the field. Apparently had his left hand on the offensive blocker, was struck on the outside of the elbow by a helmet, got a hyperextension of the elbow. Simply a bruise, and he'll be back in and play the rest of the night. Back up short. All right, Jerry, thanks very much. Third and four for the Panthers from their own 10. Scoreless first quarter. The momentum clearly in Rutgers' favor right now. Pitt trying to stop it. Van Pelt with a quick set. Throws in the flat, and it'll be way short of a first down. Huge tackle by Bellamy. The junior went out and covered the play perfectly. Jay Bellamy, an all-Big East candidate, and this is why he's there. He goes with a man in motion across your screen. He sees Van Pelt with a throw and closes on the ball immediately. And Marshall Roberts, one of the most dangerous kick return men in the nation, number five in the country, over 20 yards a catch for a return, is back. And you saw Rutgers with a sellout on the block attempt, so he had no blocking whatsoever. A return of five after a punt of 35, and Rutgers was going for the kill. And it looked like the punter that time tried to avoid him and tap tippy-toed around the rushers. I mean, stay back there. Take it for the team. Theodoro got it out of there, and there's uh, Paul Hackett talking to Alex Van Pelt. Well, that play was obviously designed to go to Boyer all the way, but Rutgers very aware of it. And once again, the Scarlet Knights in great field position at the pit 41. Forte has gone the whole way at quarterback. 
Allen back to throw. Deep sideline, underthrown and intercepted. Picked off by Vernon Lewis. His second interception of the year, and that ball never had a chance. Forte was in the pocket, seemed to be so comfortable that he really was just kind of sitting there. Now, when the wide receiver comes off the ball, he's going to have a chance. He's here. He's going up the field. Now, when Forte gets back there, he's got to anticipate. If it's ready to be thrown, throw the ball now. He clears out for the man coming back up underneath. Brantley is there. you got to throw it back to that pylon. Let the guy go for it. That just floated. And now... The Panthers setting up again at their own 14. Williams and Jermaine Williams are the running backs. This is Vince Williams, the fullback. He'll get about four. Ball came loose, but after the tackle. You know, Craig, you get the feeling the Rutgers has had so many good things happen to them in the first quarter here. They've had all the momentum, and yet it's nothing, nothing. And you wonder how long they can go without putting anything on the scoreboard till that emotion wears off. Because Pitt is on the other side of the field saying, hey, guys, we're not playing too well. And there, we're still in the game. Let's get it together and go out and put points on the board. 35 seconds to go in the period. Gain of five for Williams on the last play. Jermaine Williams on the toss. Bounces off the tackle. And has the first down up to the 26-yard line. Malik Jackson, the free safety, made the tackle. And this might be an indication as to how you really don't want the momentum swing to go the other way. Because in this situation right here, you've got eight men that are up here on the line of scrimmage. There are eight folks up there. There's no reason for this guy to get the yards that he is. It's called second effort and lack of effort on Rutgers part. Spot the ball at the 26 first down. Clock ticking down and the Panthers in no hurry to, uh, no hurry to get off the play here. Very happy to get through the first quarter tied. Nothing, nothing with the Scarlet Knights here at Rutgers Stadium. And that is the end of the first quarter. The numbers on Forte so far, three out of nine, only 21 yards and an interception. And the fans are ready for the red shirt freshmen, the people without contracts trying to make the decisions already. There's Ray Lucas. Panthers have it first and 10. Williams trying to cut it outside. Good stiff arm, running room. Picks up about six before they mark him out of bounds at the 32. Rutgers has certainly had opportunities. They've been stopped at the pit 41, the 31, and the four. And you only get so many opportunities. Rick Rachel, the defensive coordinator there, he's got to keep them out of the second and four situations. If they do that, this is perfect time now for Alex Van Pelt to have the play action. Play game, hide that football, seven, get back in the pocket and hit the one deep. And he's one of the best. Great faker and a lost art. Williams again cutting outside. More running room, bounced out of bounds at the 35 yard line, about a yard short of the first down. Williams a junior out of Detroit. Getting as many carries in this game as he had had in the first two coming in. He's also a fine receiver. Van Pelt really likes to go to him, and with Martin being such a fine runner, need to find a way to get the ball in his hands more. And Martin may be a little shaken up because he has not been in for about the last three series. Third in the yard. Jermaine Williams again hit in the backfield and dropped. Sean Williams coming from his outside linebacker spot. And here is a kid from Burlington who is a quality player. That's why he's a Buckus Award candidate. you got to make big plays. Number 92, Williams right there. Sees there's nobody going outside. The ball is going to be handed off. Down the line of scrimmage. Makes the play. Let's see if Roberts has a chance to return a kick. He's averaging more than 21 yards a return. Theodoro gets it out of there and drills one. Roberts all the way back to the 11-yard line. This guy can motor, but not this time. Back to the 22. It is a return of 11, but the punt was 54. There is a flag down on the play. Theodoro averaging 44-7 on his punts coming in. And the preliminary signal, an illegal block in the back.
Here's the storyline from Rutgers. Van Pelt. Not uh, Marino busting numbers as yet. Only two out of five, 12 yards. Forte not doing uh, much better. And Mitter, 37 yards on the ground for Rutgers. The other thing that should be up there is momentum. It has been all Rutgers so far, but they have been unable to take advantage. Forte continues as the Rutgers quarterback. And I know you are of the opinion that if Ray Lucas doesn't come in, or if he does come in, that's their best offensive move. Allen, he, he puts pressure on the perimeter, and Pitt will have to cover the entire field in. Presley is in a tailback. An outstanding runner. Cuts it outside, lost his balance, went down at the 10. Let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, what could be a devastating loss for Pittsburgh, running back or tailback Curtis Martin behind me, he was kicked in the Achilles tendon on the left ankle. That's Dr. Freddie Fu, their chief of orthopedic surgery, looking at the ankle. Apparently, Martin is unable to push off with that ankle. They're going to ice him down and hopefully be able to get him back early in the second half. But a big loss if he can't come back for the Pitt Panthers. Back upstairs. As you know, Dr. Punch, when you put ice on something in a ball game, it's hard to warm that baby back up. Second and 11, and Martin, of course, in the game plan, was going to get it 30, 35 times. Forte back to throw, wants a screen. Nice catch by Presley. Out near the 19-yard line. Charles Williams made the tackle. They had the screen set up pretty well, but Presley had to reach out with one paw and make the catch. Forte, of course, uh, has been out of action for two years, sat out a year in Miami, and then sat out a year as a transfer. Tough to come back from two years of inactivity. Because it's a reactionary game. A quarterback gets in the pocket, and he's not thinking. He reacts to what the coverage is. Third and two. Comes the blitz. Forte with time and throws for the first down. Garantano at the 32-yard line. Parker and Perkins came over to make the tackle, but a gain of 13 that time. They picked up the blitz. Garantano just seems that when he gets in the pocket, he's when he has a lot of time, he doesn't have that real tight spiral and that ball that goes out there. Now, Garantano told us that his best route was the 14 to 16-yard out. He's really comfortable with that. Garantano. Set a school record a year ago. He is number two all time in catches, number three all time in yards for the Scarlet Knights. Mitter back in a tailback. Takes the toss and plows forward across the 35 near the 38 yard line. Doug Whaley with a stop. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Guys, Rutgers fifth-year senior Travis Broadbent is really playing on courage. Now, he was injured on the first practice of the fall scrimmage back in August, underwent arthroscopic surgery on August 17th, has no anterior cruciate ligament. For those of you at home watching, that's the main ligament that stabilizes the right knee. He has none. He's wearing a brace and playing on sheer courage alone. He may not play most of the game now. He's trying to play now, but he's really hobbling back to the line of scrimmage, back upstairs. All right, thanks, Jerry. That last play, gain of five, second and five Rutgers, still scoreless. Forte, flanker screen to Brantley. Brantley shoved out of bounds between the 43 and the 44-yard line. Derek Parker. The broad bent, the anterior cruciate's the one that keeps the knee from going forward and backward, not sideways. He just doesn't have a lot of mobility, and you don't have any leg drive when that's a situation. I mean, you know, he's one-legging it over there, and that's just not going to get the job done. Courage, yes, but reality is it's hard to move once you're in that little one-yard square. Forte started three for nine, but he's hit his last three, and they'll measure for the first down. Of course, there is a, a, an investment here with getting Forte transferring from Miami. They got a tremendous amount of publicity out of it. They would love to see the young man succeed. And I believe that's the reason he started tonight and not Ray Lucas. Because first Lucas down. was so effective last week against Colgate. Sure. And Lucas is a redshirt freshman. He'll be around for a couple of more years than will Brian Forte. Of course, Coach Craver says there is no quarterback controversy, maybe not among the players, maybe not among the two quarterbacks who are very close friends, and maybe not among the coaching staff, but there is one in the stands. Of course, there always is, isn't there? <laughs> what would football be without one? Yeah, especially up here. <laughs> Mitter back in at tailback. Play action, nice fake by Forte. And plenty of time, he'll dump it off. 
to Bill Bailey. Gerald Simpson made the tackle, and Forte obviously wanted to go downfield on that play and couldn't find anyone. But that was a good decision. He really wanted Garantano running the post corner. He was covered. They'd stay deep. They didn't go on the play action fake. The secondary stayed back, and so he took something. It's a positive gain. He didn't try to throw it down there and become a hero. And when you want to play as much as he does, and you've been out for two years, you sometimes tend to force things. They did get five out of it, so second and five. Back to the ground. Mitter sidesteps one tackler and bursts up the middle. He's got another first down. What did Perkins roar up from the secondary and put a shot on him? There's a saying among running backs and the good ones, run with your eyes and your feet will follow. Now he sees right now that there's going to be pressure coming from the outside. He anticipates that, jumps up in the hole, and his feet follow him. Great, great job of just cutting, keeping your feet there. And, and once again, determination. If you don't have it as a runner, you usually don't succeed. Well, Perkins has got it, too. He came up like a guided missile. <laughs> you had it. You had it big time. Third to yard. Mitter pounds his way in there. He's got the first down. Craig, you have to be impressed with Rutgers so far, a team that over the years has been outmanned by any big-time school that they've played. They do not appear to be outmanned tonight. And mentally, they stayed in the game. As you pointed out, that they didn't have the scores early when they had the momentum. They had the ball deep in possession on this possession, yet they've come back going down the field. And Forte seems to be settling in. He just seems to be a lot more comfortable in the game. First night game at Rutgers, first national television exposure from the stadium. The stadium will only be here another year, maybe two. They will replace it with a brand new facility, about 45,000. Forte under pressure, throws and throws incomplete. The blitz coming, and Forte looking downfield like, hey, somebody's got to see that blitz and break off a pattern. And nobody did. Del Seagraves comes clean up top, and that's one of those deals that if it's a running back that's supposed to be out there, he needs to do that because they had Garantano set up on the deep ball, and you just can't get the ball. You've got to have three, three and a half seconds if you make that try. Yeah, those 45-yard passes take a little bit more than a second. <laughs> second and 10 here. Tenth play of this drive, which started with the Rutgers 11 coming down. Four-man rush. Forte with time. Near sideline. Complete first down. Got it to Lance Avena. Derek Parker made the tackle. That was the best-looking ball he's thrown tonight. He gets back in the pocket on this one, and now he throws the football before the receiver makes his break. That's a lot of confidence that the coaching staff will have in. That ball's on its way. When he turns around, it's coming. And finally seemed to throw one in rhythm instead of that little hesitation. And he did it after getting hit by Del Seagraves on the play before. Sure did. First and 10 at the Panther 30. Movement again. Looked like the right guard, Doug Kovulic. And the right tackle, Scott Vaughn, number 77, also moved. Dead ball, legal procedure, offense, first down. The defensive shift really makes an impact in this play right here. When they move over there in that right tackle, he's trying to rethink things. He hears this hard cadence, and he jumps. Five motion penalties in the first half against Rutgers, and they have cost them at crucial times. Vaughn, that right tackle, another one of the transfers. He went to Clemson originally. First and 15 now. Forte, a three-man rush, a lot of protection. Now he wants to try to run it himself and dives down at about the 33. Good decision. They dropped eight men in coverage. Tom Barnt. The nose man had to chase him down, but he got all, all out of it he could. And that's what the pit coaches wanted to do, really give a lot of different looks. And tonight, we'll even see the pit defensive ends dropping into coverage and bringing the outside linebackers. They really want to try to confuse Lucas if he's in the game, and in this case now, Brian Forte. Second and 13, or excuse me, third and 13. No, I was right the first time, second and 13. 
Rutgers has had the ball more than five minutes on this drive. Presley, the tailback. Nice fake by Forte. He wants it all. Get it. said what turned it around and he'll say a 33 yard touchdown pass against Pittsburgh beautifully thrown and Garantano made the catch John Benestad on for the point after Benestad knocks it through with the play action fake, it's a double responsibility. Top of your screen, number 18. Garantano's got to sell the run as well. Now, he, hey, he just takes off. He's going. Wells, number 42, does no clue there what's going on. He looks too much at the quarterback. And that time, he really let the ball go. And Forte knew he had it on the money to complete an 89-yard drive. This goal hasn't changed a bit. Jimmy Harris, welcome back. Seen Coach Green lately? I never thought that man would retire. He used to say, Harris, tackling is like life. Hit it head on. Harris. Coach Green. Coach Harris. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. So, you got any advice? Harris, coaching is like life. Hit it head on. <laughs> I'd like to make a toast to the bride and groom. When something's right, it works. It endures. I don't want to get too sad. As Rutgers on top of Pittsburgh, 7-0. 843 to go, first half of play, and an impressive drive it was. Nearly five and a half minutes that took 89 yards. And that's Garantano who made the touchdown catch. Jermaine Williams, who is now the starting tailback, is also going to return the kickoff from the six. And falls across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. We've got a timeout with 8.37 to go. First half from Rutgers, 7-0 Scarlet Knights. Berge, 37 to go, first half of play. And now for tonight's U.S. Army student of the game, and he is Pitt safety Doug Whaley. He is a business major with a 3.39 grade point average. Safety from Pittsburgh. Nick Rapone, the defensive coordinator, just says he's an all-around good individual, a good human being that you like having on your team. Right now, he's a little depressed, along with uh, about 75 of his best friends. Did that expression kind of sum up the way Pitt has performed? Of course, we, we knew that the Pitt offense would control the way the Pitt defense played. Right now, the Rutgers defense is controlling the Pitt offense. Van Pelt hasn't been able to do much at all. Back to throw here. Here comes the blitz. Williams from behind. They can't get there, and he got it out to Jermaine Williams. He's tackled after a gain of about two. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor? Remember, they told us about the Pitt offense would really have a major effect on how the defense performs. That's exactly what's happening. The Pitt defense looks to be quite winded over here on the bench. They've told the offense, guys, we have to have a sustained drive. We've been on the field a long time. We need to blow. So they're having a sit here on the bench, watching the offense, and hoping they can at least get a couple of first downs to get some rest. Back they, upstairs. Jerry, they've been on the field forever. Van Pelt, only three out of six, 17 yards. Williams right into the center of the line, across the 30 to maybe the 31. Keith Bryant and Andrew Beckett, the defensive ends, made the tackle. You got to control the line of scrimmage. Rutgers right now is taking it to the pit offensive line. Look at that. They control the line of scrimmage. They converge on the ball carrier, giving him no alternative. And these guys are outweighed 30, 40, even 50 pounds a man up front. But they're fresh. Pitt's That's defense for sure. is tired. 
third and five, and the number of plays the Rutgers has run has kept that pit defense on the field. Van Pelt in the pocket, throws in rhythm, and has the completion to Boyer. First down. Boyer tackled by Tim Geckler. Gain of 15 yards for the Panthers. And maybe that's the play that sparks them. Now, Boyer will go up the field and come across. He's the kind of guy that you got to get the ball to because he can run with it. A lot of room over there, and the one thing that he does once he gets there is he gets up the field and tries to get all he can, and that is giving enthusiasm to that bench, which needs it. And Van Pelt has broken the career yardage record of Dan Marino. <laughs> Movement. Panthers got an early start. Well, you knew it was only a matter of time when Van Pelt, early in his career, racked up some such great numbers. Of course, he's wanting that big W over the or a national championship. I think that now would work better for him. Update in the pennant race, the Expos and the Pirates, the Blue Jays with a lead in the sixth. Their lead down to three games over the Orioles in the American Ball League East. And there it is, the numbers for Van Pelt, 8,599 yards, finally breaking Dan Marino's all-time record. Brilliant achievement by Alex Van Pelt. Play action, nice fake. He wants more. He's got gels out there and overthrows him. Gels, a 100 and 200 meter sprint champion in high school, can really fly. And Jay Bellamy beaten by two strides. Wow. Dietrich gels up top of your screen. He comes off and he is going for the pay dirt. This ball's in the air about 60, 65 yards. And I can't I just can't tell you how tough it is to keep your eyes on that football when you're running that fast. I mean, your head's all over the place. Oh, we're bouncing. Looks like four footballs coming down. Second and 15. The Panthers go with a quick snap, trying to catch him off guard and do. Now there's a penalty flag down in midfield, and we'll check this out for you. Marshall Roberts made the tackle. And 12 men on the field, I believe, for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, and the Panthers caught them with 12 guys out there. It's a heads-up play. <laughs> Rutgers doing all they can to win this game. They've been stopping him fine with 11. That big bomb that Van Pelt threw, though, I've been waiting for that because that's going to loosen up that secondary. Doesn't it amaze you, Mike, how officials, do, nothing gets by them? No, that is that is amazing to catch things like that all the time. Here's the call. It's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. We have 12 men participating against the defense. 15 yards, first down. That's one of those rules I think that needs to be changed. 15 yards is, like, is a lot. I mean, it's like a procedure penalty. You've just made a mental error. I don't think you ought to be hung for 15 for that. No, 15, maybe a compromise, take it to 10. Spotted at the 33-yard line, the Scarlet Knights have already given up 55 yards for cause of penalty. Jermaine Williams, he'll only get a couple. George Stewart, casts and all, had him around the ankles and then got a lot of help. The NHL will be back on ESPN, and very soon, October 6th, the season premiere, the long-awaited pro debut of Eric Lindros as he heads the Philadelphia Flyers against two-time defending Stanley Cup champion Pittsburgh Penguins. And don't forget, we'll have most of the Stanley Cup playoffs in every game of the Stanley Cup Finals on ESPN. Second and nine. Williams the fullback. No, sir. And as they did last week, it looks, Craig, like the Panthers are tending to force the run. They're saying, we can be a running football team. And when you look at the numbers of Van Belt, you got to say, hey, to heck with this. It's not working right now. Let's drop back in the pocket and let Alex air it out and do something with it. And Van Pelt wants to go over and talk about it with Paul Hackett with 514 to go in the first half. Pittsburgh finds itself down 7-0 to Rutgers. 
from Rutgers. If you just joined us, Mike Patrick, Craig James, and Dr. Jerry Punch with you. Glad you could join us on a Thursday night. And the Scarlet Knights and the silly guys with the uh, with the balloon hats are enjoying this. <laughs> Third down and eight for the Panthers at the Rutgers, 32. And they've converted only two of six so far tonight. Third and eight is not where you want to be. Three wide receivers to the far side. Three-man rush. Van Pelton, the flat to Williams. And he is going to be stopped short of the first down. Nice job of tackling as Rutgers had three players converge on him. And that is about the fourth time they've gone to that little swing. And now, once again, it's time for a decision, Craig. Well, I, and in this situation here, you need some points. But look at your receivers up top. What they're going to do is they're going to go up, and they're just going to block. It's a screen all the way. They want to get the ball to the back. I mean, you've got this all this running room right here. Get the ball to him a little bit earlier. Let him catch it and get up the field. Rutgers, though, showing a lot of pursuit and aggressiveness. And Dorsey will come on to attempt the field goal. The spot just outside the 31. So it's a 40, or excuse me, Conley, a 41-yard field goal attempt. He is one for one this year. There's a flag down. Delay of game, that will cost them five. Watching Conley in warm-ups, his range appeared to be about 44, 45, 46 yards. Scott Kaplan would have been their place kicker this year. He had an appendectomy last month, so he's gone. And Conley, a walk-on transfer from Gannon University, has become the kicker. 46 yards. Had the distance, but wide left. And every time you turn around, Craig, something else to pump up Rutgers. It's just a flat bench at Pitt. They have got to do something to get some enthusiasm over there. I mean, is it Alex Van Pelt? I think that's the player that you put the ball in the pocket, let him throw, and make something happen. They're just not being able to run and control that Rutgers defensive line. They were so concerned a year ago that they threw the ball all the time. They wanted to establish the ground game. But as you said earlier, if it's not there, it's not there. And now let's see what Rutgers can do with the last four minutes of the half. Presley. Gets about three. First man to hit him, Charles Williams. Then Simpson came up and helped him out. Brought down by Kevin Leon. I think right here, this is one of those deals that if you're the pit defense, you better be watching because Stan Parrish, the offensive coordinator at Rutgers, he likes to throw when it's like a running get a down. And this is one of those deals you might get Garantano to get past somebody deep. He's got man coverage, it appears, out there right now. Now the Panthers backing out of an eight-man front. Forte with a quick hitch. And read very well by Hupko, who nearly got a hand on it, intended for Garantano. It's the second time Hupko has made a good break in an out, out pattern. But I'm of the opinion that with a guy like Garantano, who is a tremendous receiver with good speed, you get a little hitch in your route there at four yards, and you go. You make them stay with you on a foot raise and prove that they can stay with you before you go to the short game. Forte over 100 yards and has the only score of the ball game on the 33-yard touchdown pass to Garantano. And the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. And flags are down. Another delay. A lot of delay and procedure calls in this ball game. Forte, he says it's on me, but it's really on the entire ball club. It's on the coaching staff getting the play in. It's on him to make sure he gets to the line of scrimmage and lets the players know, hey, we're down, fellas. Let's get up there and go with a little quicker cadence. Third and 12 now. Rutgers, eight penalties, 60 yards in the first half. Running 
Pitt with a straight four-man rush. Forte designed quarterback draw. Not much room, and he'll go down at the 32-yard line. Smart play. Saw nothing but white and gold in front of him, and Charles Williams covered him. You sense from Rutgers that they don't have that knockout punch yet. They've got right. they've got Pitt on the ropes right now. And they've got to learn how to come out and just mm, deliver it and end the game. Lippitz is on to kick. And Natoli waits at his 30. And after that one fumble, you don't think Natoli would like to break one? Walk around down to 219. Better kick this time from Lippitz. And will be marked out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Coming up at halftime, we'll be going back to the studio. Chris Fowler will be there and update you on what's left of the Major League Baseball pennant races. And we'll have our halftime blitz and get you back up to speed on college football this week. That halftime blitz is required viewing for the audience. It, gets, <laughs> it does. It gets you ready for the weekend. It's fun. Pittsburgh with 2.11 to go in the first half. Let's see if Van Pelt comes out throwing. Throws the out. Nice catch over there. Oh, what a grab. Boyer, beautiful hands. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Rutgers offensive line coach Mark Beal behind me talking to his good offensive line. Now, a minute ago, Kabulich went in the center because Travis Broadbent, the senior center, came out. Remember, he's the guy that has the ligament injury. Now, what they plan on trying to do is alternate the centers and possibly have Broadbent go two series and then Kabulich go in and rest Broadbent for a series to try to stretch out an entire game. Back upstairs. All right, Jerry, thanks very much. 152 to go first half. Panthers with two timeouts left. Van Pelt doing what he does best. It gels. And gels with that brilliant speed is going to get a lot of room underneath. And Van Pelt showing why he's the all-time pit passing leader. Boy, do they give him a lot of room over there. They know that two things can happen. They can get run past because they've seen that happen a while ago and in a good route and the strong arm of Van Pelt throwing the ball like that. I, I'm impressed. I think you got to keep doing it. Seven out of 11, 55 yards. There's gels. Blazing speed, 4-3-40. Van Pelt again, quick slant. That one was knocked up in the air. Boyer couldn't hold it. <coughs> Excuse me, and now flags go down. George Stewart hit him. Well, it looked like the contact was well after it was touched by Boyer. Well, they're saying that he tipped the ball. It was tipped at the line, and so he was fair game. Oh, once it's touched, you're right. How do you like that? When you make the call, you got to be looking at the coaching staff, trying to convince them that the call is right. Let's take a look. Quick slant pattern here. 18, Boyer goes up. Boom, comes to the inside. Contact is made. Oh, he yeah. pushed him. Definitely. I was looking at the second hit where Stewart came over and got him, but he was pushed before. How sweet a pass was that? That was, right on target. So the interference call makes it a first down at the Rutgers 46. A minute 45 to go in the half. Hit down by a touchdown. Tim Colicchio is the new tailback. Sidearm this time to Coons, the tight end. And a good tackle by Marshall Roberts. Coons is 6'6", 230, and Roberts went for the best place in the ankle. Just shy of a first down. And now the officials, with the clock stopped, have called their own timeout. And the Rutgers sideline's going crazy. They wanted the clock to continue to run, and it wasn't. Well, the officials call time so they can measure and find out if it's a first down. Big break for Pitt right there. They're, well, I say that. They're moving down the field. Rutgers probably <laughs> would want this kind of call right now, timeout, so they can regroup. And you see it's going to be uh, short. And the crowd really getting on the officials here, as is the coaching staff. 
He's telling him, hey, make him throw the foot and ball on the ground so I can pat you on the back. They have not gotten much pressure on Van Pelt. Of course, when you take the short drops and you've got the fine arm that he does, it's tough to get anywhere near him. And Paul Hackett with that passing game was his specialty as an assistant coach in the pros. The Rutgers crowd trying to get back into it. Their club up by a touchdown. It's 7-0 first half. And Van Pelt, who has broken Dan Marino's all-time yardage record, going to work on second and a foot. Colicchio hit in the backfield. He'll lose five. Well, I guess they were just trying to get the first down out of it, but what it does is keep the clock running, and Paul Hackett now signaling for a timeout. The second of his third. Timeout, a minute nine to go in the half. We'll be back in a moment. You'd think if you want the first down, you'd go for the quarterback keep and then get up and, and run your offense again. Well, and if there's seven minutes left in the second quarter, maybe you try a run, but they've been moving with Van Pelt's arm. Third and five now. Comes the blitz. Van Pelt throws complete, but it will be short of the first down. Rutgers swarmed on Boyer. Excuse me, on Bill Davis. And it will be fourth and about two. Clock running, 51 seconds to go. And Paul Hackett talking it over with Van Pelt. All the while, the clock is running here, and Pitt has one timeout left. Well, if I'm Rutgers here, I'm thinking about calling a timeout so that I have a chance to get the ball back and make two quick plays and get in field goal range. Well, they wasted about 15 seconds there going to the sideline and talking about it. Van Pelt just trying to get the first down and throws incomplete. Tried to get it to Gels. Sidearm, but Gels couldn't hold it. So Rutgers holds again. And you saw Paul Hackett saying what happened. Jackson thought he intercepted the ball. He's coming from the right side. I mean, you if the ball doesn't go down, well, what the ref might have said was that ball bounced off the ground. Yeah, Ball. hit the ground, then yeah. his hand. But what an effort by Jackson. Malik just came flying over. And now Rutgers setting up to kill the clock. And for some reason, some of the fans are booing. Well, it's been a long time since they have had a big game in this stadium. Tonight is, and they are up on a name team, 7-0 over Pittsburgh. Quite a first half for the Scarlet Knights. They have hung in there through adversity. They've made things happen. They've controlled the offensive line of Pittsburgh. And to me, that's been the story so far in the first half. Panthers lead the field. They are down 7-0. And Forte has the only score of the first half on a 33-yard touchdown pass. That's the end of the first half. Rutgers 7, Pittsburgh nothing. Chris Fowler after this. Told me to put ice on in a ball game. I figured, hey, I was finished. And most players, if you put ice on something like that, the mentality, you, you break down and you, you pretty much give up mentally yourself. That is Curtis Martin, number 29, on the sideline. Center deep man, Jermaine Williams. He'll take it a yard deep and bring it out. Stopped short of the 20-yard line, swarmed by the Rutgers special team at the 19. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. And Rutgers with 101 yards passing. Who would have believed it that Van Pelt would have been outpassed in the first half? The penalties, that really sticks out. Nine for 65 yards for Rutgers in the first half. The time of possession only four seconds apart. Surprising that with all of those penalties against Rutgers that they're leading seven to nothing. Exactly. And Martin will give it a go at tailback. Two tight ends. And two wideouts. And Martin will get the carry. Squeezed his way across the 20. A yard, maybe two. 
Sean Williams in on the tackle. Once again, coming out on first down and running, there's just nothing happening up there. You've got all these people that are stacked in here, and they are not getting fooled by anything. I mean, they are there. They're at home. They're not getting driven back into the secondary. You got a tailback coming off the bench that's had ice on his Achilles. You know, let him get warmed up, too. Sean Williams really flashed in the backfield. Van Pelt, nice play action fake. Throws over the middle, Coons, the tight end up to the 38 yard line. Marshall Roberts makes the stop, a gain of 17. There's that play action. And what that does is it buys that tight end enough time to get across and to really open it up. Van Pelt, just such a great play action. He does this thing, selling it. Look how he hides the ball there in his tummy, comes across and knows exactly where that tight end is supposed to be, and Coons is there. Creates a lot of openings, doesn't it? Panthers out to the 38-yard line. Coons out of Brea, California. Van Pelt the throw. Backside pressure, got rid of it, and it's caught and down quickly by Chris Boyer out of Detroit. And Van Pelt hit from the back after he released. And Sean Williams was the man that was coming hard from outside linebacker. Second down and Boyer now four catches, 30 yards. Excuse me. We had a chance visiting with Williams yesterday. Just a soft spoken, kind individual. <laughs> man, talking about putting the helmet on and changing gears. <laughs> this isn't so soft spoken. Boom. Oh, he got a couple of steps, too. And unloaded. Second and four. Martin. Williams in on the bottom of the tackle again. Three sacks, two tackles behind the line of scrimmage coming in. Fourth all time on the Rutgers sack list at 13 a year ago. And one of 49 Butkus Award candidates. That list will be pared down next month. Martin, 10 carries, 47 yards, even though he did not play a lot of the first half. Minter with 49. Third and a yard. And Van Pelt calls a timeout, but there's a flag down at the same time. Which came first? I think he was just applauding that they jumped Oh, it was? Okay, you're right. And now, once again, another penalty that does no good for your defense. Encroachment. Defense. First time. Just over anxious. They had uh, a lot of guys near the line of scrimmage and wanted to try to stuff that third and one. Ten penalties, 70 yards. Panthers once again in Rutgers territory. They've been there a lot tonight. Have no points to show for it. Here comes the reverse. Davis. Van Pelt leading the way. And Davis hurdles his way down to the 33-yard line. So Paul Hackett going to the bag of tricks. Doug Atkins makes the tackle after a gain of 14. And Chris Sistelli, the uh, center, was out there throwing a good block, too. Well, they've got such an overflowing defense there. They take advantage of that, and that's a good call. Now, Davis getting up there. Van Pelt doing absolutely nothing other than running down the field, getting a little conditioning. <laughs> Take it easy on those quarterbacks. Hey, man, as big as he is, he ought to go lay somebody out. Said like a true running back. Another first down Panthers, their most impressive drive of the night so far. Here comes the blitz. Van Pelt in the flat. And a great tackle. Excellent job by Todd Lane, the senior. Just got a piece of Curtis Martin. And that was a good read by Van Pelt, too. He saw the pressure coming. Oh, and he's got a long ways to go, too. They set this up. Todd Lane in the middle of the field. He's got a long ways to be able to keep up with this guy. They clear out on the right side, which is what they got to do. But Lane knows exactly what's coming, and that's why he gets in gear right from the get-go. Actually lost a yard on the play, so it's second and 11. Back to the ground game. Colicchio. Pile drives his way down to the 25-yard line where Malik Jackson puts him down. Colicchio out of Erie, the sophomore, getting his first real action of the season. And his first carry in this ballgame. Martin, after that screen pass, got up limping at left Achilles. It's just not working for him. And you've got to have all of your first to be an effective player. Third and two, a long two. 
They have to make the 23-yard line. Colicchio on the toss sweep. No way. That's about the fifth time tonight they have tried to go outside and Malik Jackson or Sean Williams or somebody from the outside cuts it off. They're running against nine. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right there. Another one comes. When you've got a situation like that, Van Pelt is so good with the play action pass. You got to fake it. You got to get him back and let him throw one on one with his receiver. And Van Pelt looking toward the sideline on fourth and now between four and five. And now they'll send in the field goal team. Conley, who missed earlier from 47, this is 44 yards. Out of the hole of John Ryan, a backup quarterback. This one's got the distance, and it's good. So with 9.51 to go third quarter, the Panthers finally have something to cheer about, and they get on the scoreboard. They still trail by four. This is my new Dodge Caravan. Dad says it costs under 13.8. Mom says it's a great deal. It's air conditioning at no extra charge when you buy the family value package. It's safe, too. With the driver's airbag, rear seat shoulder harnesses, you can even get available built-in child seats. Maybe that's why Caravan is the number one selling minivan in the whole wide world. Dodge Caravan, recommended by kids everywhere. Myers, offensive coordinator at Pitt, talking to his players, trying to get some adjustments going there. No, the reverse on the last series, the pass to, to Coons, the tight end across the middle. On play action. Things that are away from the middle of that field that just haven't consistently worked. Conley to kick it away. And Bill Bailey and Bruce Presley are deep to receive. They're waiting at the five-yard line. Bailey, 21. Sellout crowd here very quiet right now. I think they'd really be whooping it up here. I get a feeling around here that they're trying to learn what it's like to be in a big game and how to respond. Presley has a seam. Crosses the 30 to near the 34-yard line. The scoring drive took more than five minutes off the clock, 55 yards, and Conley who missed from 47 earlier, connected from 44 yards out to make it 7-3. And Forte with the hip pointer will come out for the second half to quarterback this club. Certainly looked more relaxed in the first half than he had been in his first two ball games. Over week ago, it's ball game. And Forte to throw on first down. Pump fake wants the bomb again. And this one will be well out of bounds. Intended for Brantley, but the Panther secondary didn't bite on this one. Lewis, Burton. the man who was burned earlier. You think he had a little coaching at halftime? Vernon Lewis this time, what does he do? Looks right at the receiver. In the touchdown earlier, he had looked at the quarterback all the way and went for the pump fake. Lewis also did a good job getting his body over toward the sideline. Brantley had no place to go but out of bounds. The toss sweep on second and ten. Got about four yards out of it, and that's it. 54 yards on the night for Mitter. C. Graves and Hayes Clark were in on the tackle for the Pitt Panthers. Did a nice job of stretching, stretching, and then once he realized that he had a crease inside, he hits it. As Paul Hackett said, this team is an unknown in the middle. They lost Sean Gilbert and Keith Hamilton to the NFL draft. Tumulty was injured, so uh, presumably they're your three best players on defense. Not available to you this year. On third and six, Forte, four-man rush. Guns this one complete, and depending on where they mark it, this could be a first down, and a flag is down after the play. Certainly the strongest throw of the night for Forte. And where the officials appear to have marked it, it looks like it will be a first down. We will check the penalty, though. And the 
personal foul penalty will come against Rutgers. It will be a first down, so it's a dead ball foul. And it will make it first and a half mile. But as you said, the beauty of that play was that he had plenty of protection in the pocket. He stayed there. He was poised. And when the man made the break, boom, he let it go. Nice job of forming a pocket. They sit there. They form the pocket. He's there. He's patient. Man makes his move. He lets go of the ball. Throwing off the front foot. Oh, yeah. Nice lane. Good passing lane. The receiver finds it. Gets away for the quarterback to see his eyes and know he's there. And it looked like Chris Stoll, the tight end, was the guy who was guilty of the late hit on the block. So mark it back at the 30, first and 25. Forte escapes the blitz, throwing on the run and complete. Del Seagraves was coming hard and looked like he had Forte with a six or seven yard loss and couldn't hold him. Pitt coaches told Del Seagraves one thing that they wanted him to do. They wanted him to concentrate on getting up the field. Top of your screen, number 91, up the field, make something happen with your hands. Get vertical, do something. Well, he got vertical. Got horizontal on that one. <laughs> a little bit of both. Second and 25, 8.34 to go, third quarter. Rutgers seven, pit three. And they're going to be a little conservative with a play call. Mitter breaking tackles out to the 35-yard line. Right now, you get the feeling Rutgers does not want to make the big mistake. Third 20, this is why offensive coordinators, they make a lot of money. <laughs> if you throw a pass and it completed 15 yards, you're a genius. If you throw the pick, you're a bum. And he faces third and 20 right now, Forte. Looking much more relaxed than he had been his first two ball games after transferring from Miami and effectively sitting out two years. Four-man rush. Good protection again. Forte with time over the middle. And that time, Garantano appeared to lose his footing just as he was making his last cut. But there were a lot of white shirts around him. But there's just a soft pocket there. Number 18, Garantano, when he goes up, there's going to be a little a cushion zone between. As he comes across, it looks like the ball was, well, a little bit behind him, but had he kept his footing, he's got to settle right there and know that that's where the ball is supposed to go. That's impressive by Forte to know where he's supposed to throw the ball. Sure was. That's Natoli waiting back to 25. Lippitz to pop. Short kick. And it will bounce out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Lippitz a punt of 36 yards, no return. Timeout, 7.40 to go, third quarter. Dorsett at Pittsburgh. He is back up defensive back. Anthony Dorsett out of Aliquippa, 5'11", 185. And if he has a fifth of his dad's talent, he's going to be a great player. I still call him Dorsett. He's got to get the Heisman <laughs> bar calling Dorsett. Dad was a great player. This young man said his father has never put any pressure on him. He said, you don't have to prove anything to me. You don't have to prove anything to anybody else. Just prove it to yourself. Be what you can be. First and 10, Pittsburgh. Williams. And the fullback got about six before he was knocked out of bounds. Marshall Roberts made the tackle. Take you back a few yards or a few years and yards. 73 to 76, there was nobody better. A lot of people will say there never was anybody better than Tony Dorsett, and that is his glass-enclosed locker in the pit locker room, and his son passes that every day at practice. He tends to put a lot of pressure on a young man, whether he's asking for it or not. Williams, the fullback again, pounding his way down to the Rutgers 42-yard line. Vince Williams who came into this game averaging two and a half yards a carry has just ripped off a couple of big ones there. And you get the feeling Pitt saw something in the Rutgers defense that that quick hitter would work. Well, the right side of the line just collapses, and he makes a great cut back here. Look at this, the vision of the fullback to get backside and go. 
Rutgers to this point has been incredibly disciplined and stayed in all of their lanes. That time they were out of position. Mike Lavorio, the senior right tackle, number 76, with a whale of a block on the last play. First and 10, Panthers. Van Pelt chased out of the pocket. Throwing on the run, almost intercepted. Intended for Boyer. Two different Rutgers players had a shot at it, including Jay Bellamy. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Jerry? A minute ago, Pitt offensive coordinator Bill Myers totally rearranged the blocking scheme up front. The concern is when they're in the two tight ends with the stack eye, the toss, the wide sweep is getting stuffed for the linebackers. So he decided to rearrange the blocking scheme primarily for the tight ends. They're going to do a slip block, get upfield, seal off the linebacker, and try to get the back outside. And apparently, a minute ago, it worked for about an eight-yard gain. Back upstairs. All right, Jerry, nice adjustment. And now one of the Panthers jumping off sides, the tight end Rob Coons. But that's, Craig, that's what coaching is, isn't it? Is making those kind of adjustments. And players being able to listen and make the adjustments right. themselves. But they like to zone block. And if they're going to do that, they've got to really, they got to really do something with that. Look at this. Now, this is this is called uh, trying to be a fullback, fellas. You've got to get up here. Your helmet has to touch the numbers of that center. they got to be up here. That was like a, that was a crazy formation there all the way. Yeah. After the penalty, now second and 15. Colicchio back in a tailback, and he'll get the carry. And maybe a yard. So Pitt once again on second and long goes with the running play and face with third and long. Well, look at the splits. Now Pitt has really widened it. We got three-step splits over here now. They're going to try to just spread the defense out so that they can create running lanes for the ball carriers. You also create some lanes for linebackers, don't you? Well, you got to come off. If they're going to work slip blocks and do that kind of blocking scheme, they better come off and find their man and get on them. Third and 13. Pitt only two out of nine on third down conversion. Four-man rush. And Van Pelt overthrew everybody. The closest guy to it was Chris Boyer down the sideline, but he missed him by seven yards. And the Rutgers defense holds again. Boy, Pittsburgh gets the punting team on very, very rapidly. Theodoro to kick to Roberts. Just tried to knock it inside the 20 and shanked it badly. This punt may be four or five yards by the time they're done marking it off. College football game day comes your way Saturday at 11.30. Then we'll have Oklahoma State and Michigan. Number six Wolverines, our college football scoreboard show at 6 o'clock, all the scores and highlights. And then two monster games, Ohio State at number eight Syracuse, followed by number 12 Nebraska against number two Washington. It was an eight-yard punt. So Rutgers able to take over its own 36-yard line. Forte, nice fake. Rifles one and has it complete to Garantano. Pretty play. Did that look comfortable or not? Wow. How we've seen the kid grow up here. Watch the play action fake. Now, this takes a lot of inner confidence by a quarterback. Look at that. Holding the ball behind him, letting things happen downfield, and then once it's there, mm, let go of it. Garantano, the wise receiver, once he gets up there, he comes back. Watch him come back so he can make this reception. Gain of 15, another first down. He may not have caught it. Mitter trying to get outside. There's a flag down on the play, and they threw it right at the feet of tight end Tim Pernetti, and they've got him holding. Last play may not have been a catch. Well, when you're playing at home, things sometimes go your <laughs> way. Uh, nice I can take another look. Too. No. No? No. Garantano, 62 catches a year ago, number one in the Big East Conference. And the Stars get the calls, don't they? And, and he's, the kind of that. Guy, he's the kind of guy that if we ask him after the bike, he'll say, hey, that was a catch all the way. 
first and 20 now for Rutgers. 6.06 to go third quarter. Comes the blitz, and Forte with a screen against it. Presley, blockers in front. Slips a man. down a 58 yard screen pass to redshirt freshman Bruce Presley the inquirer may have it tomorrow Presley sighted in New Jersey Benestad for the point after This is some run and some call. Watch the patience here of the linemen. One, 1,002, take off. They were patient and then a perfect pass. Presley knowing who's going to be out there and then a nice job of everybody blocking, wanting to make something happen. And Presley takes off the big man from Pitt. 71 can't make it. And Rutgers with the big play. They've actually had the two biggest plays of the game. They're up by 11. At Permaseal Window and Door Center, we've got the solution to so many of your home remodeling needs. My grandpa shopped here, and so did my dad. Now I find the same great values they did. I can do it myself, and always find what I need in stock. With Permaseal's expert advice, I save money and time. Permaseal installers tackle my work for me, and always do the job right. Visit Permaseal Window and Door Center, where top name windows and doors save you money every day. Its design and performance are unsurpassed. Best of all, it uses up to 40% less gas. It's the Lennox Pulse 21 gas furnace. Quality is what you'll get at Dan's Heating and Air Conditioning. Since 1972, Dan's Heating and Air Conditioning has provided peace of mind service to Middlesex and Mercer counties. They are committed to customer satisfaction. Give us a call today. Now, see your local dealer for special savings. Coming up Saturday morning on College Game Day, we'll dissect all the big games, including Washington, Nebraska, and Florida, Tennessee. Plus, a conversation with Michigan's Elvis Gerbach and Syracuse's Fab Four. Join Lee Corso, Craig James, and me. Stayed home, went to Rutgers, and he just ripped off 58 yards on a screen pass to put the Scarlet Knights on top, 14-3. to The coaches all know they've got to keep the New Jersey kids at home. They're doing a better and better job and they are on the verge of one of the biggest wins that this program has ever had. And the kick in and out of the end zone, and the Panthers will have to start from the 20-yard line. One of the New Jersey players they were able to keep at home, Deron Cherry, who graduated from Rutgers in 81, the team VP in 79. He's also the punter, averaged nearly 40 yards a kick, and in the pros, started five Pro Bowls. Appeared in that game six times, had two interceptions in this wild card win against the Raiders, and closed out his career last season. Great, great defensive back in a tremendous secondary in Kansas City. Let's see what the Panthers will choose to do on first and ten. Nice play action by Van Pelt, but there's a flag down. And Rutgers is pumped now. But at least Pitt was going to play action. I really believe Pitt has a tremendous opportunity in this game now because they've been placed in an adverse situation that's going to force them to throw and allow Van Pelt to use his arm. Exactly. This is a huge game for Rutgers because it puts them on the map. It changes their mindset. It's a huge game for Pittsburgh because if they start one and two, they could be in an awful lot of trouble the rest of the year. And they'll go with a ground game. Martin is back in there. Martin may lose five. He's just drilled by Robert Snaithen. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. A proud Rutgers alum you just saw moments ago. 11 years in the NFL. Deron Cherry and Deron, 
you were one of the early believers that Doug Graber could turn this program around. Yes, I think he's done just an outstanding job. You look at tonight, the way the defense is playing. They've kept this team in the game, and these players believe in Doug Graber. He's done an outstanding job of keeping the best town in New Jersey here at Rutgers, and he's, so far, he's just, just been incredible. You're impressed with Malik Jackson, a hard hitter. He's a big kid. I, I stood beside him. I couldn't believe he's playing free safety that big. He's a big-time player. He's only a junior. He's got another year. I think he can take that next step to the next level. Thank you, Deron, for joining us. Back upstairs. All right, thank you, Jerry. Second and 16. It looks like another call against Pitt for delay of game. And it's actually procedure. It'll cost him five more. And Paul Hackett is watching his offense come apart. And the Rutgers, Rutgers crowd seems to be understanding now what kind of game and yep. how they have a chance. It's like, hey, we're really there, folks. Hey, this is a team they'd never beaten. The series started in 1981. Pitt is 9-0. Second and 21. Van Pelt airs it out for Jills. He's got it. Jills will go all the way. Touchdown, Pitt. Van Pelt, before that pass, had 89 yards in the air. He got two more on that throw. They may not run again. Well, somebody's pulled a hamstring trying to catch that kid. <laughs> Several. He can burn it. And the Panthers may go for two. They're down 14-9. The two-point conversion would get them to within a field goal. And Rutgers calls the timeout. I think it's a good call by Paul Hackett to go for the two here. No doubt about it. Dietrich Gels, top of your screen here. Now, now, when he takes off, he's got one thing in mind. A sprint. He's going for it. He knows that Van Pelt's got the arm to get it to him. And this ball, my friend, is thrown a long ways. And there's no way that they're going to catch up with him. they got to be anticipating that. There is no way that Bellamy, number nine, should have been hanging that, that close. He's got to get back. And Van Pelt threw that ball at least 50 yards in the air, probably a little further. And it was a strike to Gels. He just lets off. I mean, no pass pressure at all. Bellamy number nine just should not let that happen. You've got to, you know, well, how far was that? Was it second and 25 or, I mean, it was a long way. And he appeared to throw it from the five yard line to the opposing 40. That's 55 yards in the air, a strike. That's why I said now that they've been put in an adverse situation and allow him to throw the football, they got a chance to win the game. Van Pelt out to go for two, trying to cut the lead to only a field goal. Both wide receivers come to the near side. Van Pelt just can't find anybody. Now he throws it up for grabs and picked off in the end zone by Robert Sneefen. So the margin remains at five, and the Panthers will need a touchdown, but a good gamble by the Panthers. Once they started rolling to the right side, everybody on the Rutgers defense kind of just goes over that way. They've got everybody out there trying to do something to cover. Plenty of coverage that gave them no chance. Even Andrew Beckett, number 98, that's where we saw him go back in the coverage. He was back in the end zone as well. Bill Davis really wanted the ball thrown to him. It's, it's a universal thing about receivers. Receivers can have three defenders tightly wrapped around them, and they've got their hands up saying, I'm open, oh, I'm yeah. open. Always. Hope you'll join John Miller and Joe Morgan. Sunday night baseball this week, the Dodgers and San Francisco on America's Game of the Week at 8 o'clock. Could be the last trip for the Dodgers into Candlestick Park. Hope you watch it at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific.
And you just witnessed the longest pass play in pit history. 91 yards. Van Pelt to Gels. They need to get off Gels. He's trying to find oxygen. And now the Panthers with a huge adrenaline rush. There, there's a lot of things that need to happen for a team like Rutgers to get to the next level. And one is having a team down 14 to three and staying on top of them. They were excited, but they relaxed mentally. Bellamy drops his hands down and he gets beat. And that's why it's, it's a big jump to the next level. Really the second time Bellamy has been beaten that badly. Remember back in the first half, Gels had five, six yards on him and the ball was overthrown. Bailey and Presley to return. Bailey from the 14. Has a seam up the middle across the 30 to about the 33 yard line. Pretty decent starting position for the Scarlet Knights. Of course, you are watching a game between two members of the Big East Football Conference. Different schools than Big East basketball. But they hope in the future it will be just as successful. One of the computer ranking services already says it's the second most powerful conference in the country. Miami, of course, uh, has a lot to do with that. But some other outstanding football programs, including Syracuse, West Virginia, Boston College, and Rutgers trying to get up there among the elite. Forte has gone all the way at quarterback. Nice play action again. Forte on the run. Throws complete at the sideline to Garantano. Of course, these schools really have gotten a boost from the Big East Conference, especially a school like Rutgers, an up-and-coming program. If you can go into a kid's home and say, hey, we're in the same conference as Miami and Pittsburgh, I mean, you've really done something. And it also gives coaches a chance to have goals, something concrete. They can right. shoot for the Big East Championship, not just the national championship as an independent. And if they do well in the conference, it will be easier for them to get into a bowl game. Here's Presley again to midfield. Taken down by Hayes, Clark, and Charles Williams, the inside linebackers. It's been a game of momentum Rutgers had at the entire first half, only able to generate seven points out of it. Then they got the 58-yard screen pass for the touchdown. Appeared to have everything going their way. And the Panthers answer on a 91-yard strike. Second and seven. Rutgers at midfield. Pitch showing blitz. Here they come. Forte with time. Throws deep. Incomplete. Intended for Brantley, but he was beautifully covered back there. Pitt not fooled at all. Vernon Lewis on the coverage. So let's check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor? Guys, we'll probably see Presley in the backfield for a little while because senior running back Craig Mitter behind me complaining of cramps in both calves. Now, trainer Eric Nussbaum in front of Mitter massaging the, the cramps, trying to get the calves to loosen up. But right now, he's still pretty uncomfortable, and he'll be on the bench for probably at least one more series before going back in. Back upstairs. Doc, I had a trainer one time told me when you get cramps to pinch underneath your nose just on your upper lip as hard as you can. I walked around for a quarter doing that, and I had a sore lip for a week. <laughs> Did it help the cramps? I don't know. I think I was crazy enough to believe the guy. Third and seven. Play action. Blitz. Forte. Escape one. Then he fumbled. Do they rule it a fumble or an incomplete pass? Well, they say the ball is down there. Second sack for Pittsburgh. He's got to see this now. When this man comes, he's got to know that. He's got to be ready to get rid of the football. They just, that's great defensive, a, a defensive call by Pitt to bring him off the corner. Forte, fortunately for him, got it right back. Lippitz to kick to Natoli, number 15. Lippitz has not kicked the ball well tonight. Another low line drive, but this one gets the nice bounce inside the 20 as he aimed for the far sideline and got it. It wasn't pretty, but it was wonderfully effective. 46-yard punt. Of course, Rutgers, with tremendous football tradition, which is something that uh, they try to sell to kids. They win the first intercollegiate game ever against Princeton, 6-4, and have played over 1,000 games, the most in Division I history. 122 years of football ties them with Princeton. But right now, all these Rutgers kids don't care about history. They want to start their own chapter in Rutgers football history in this game. Ooh, 
Hit back to the ground game, and Williams nailed inside the 15-yard line. Jermaine Williams in there because Curtis Martin with that Achilles injury. He's a junior out of Detroit, and Jameel Jackson made the tackle. I'm impressed with Rutgers' defense and the way they get east and west. I wasn't expecting them to be able to run as well as they do. They're very small up front, and you better be able to run if, uh, if you have that lack of size as they do. They've shown it tonight. Martin is back in the tail, back on second and eight. Van Pelt against the blitz, out to Martin. Near the 20, banged out of the 18-yard line. Jay Bellamy on the tackle along with the other corner, Marshall Roberts. Pitt likes that flat pass. They've worked that several times. Well, the linebackers are staying inside, and the linebacker is the one that's responsible for Martin when he goes out in the flat like that. They like the mismatch that they get with that situation. It's going to be third and five from just inside the 20. Williams back in the tailback. Van Pelt throwing on the run. Complete up to the 24. It'll be a first down to Chris Boyer. Todd Lane, the linebacker, in on the coverage. Good job by Van Pelt. Van Pelt, the reason he's as good as he is and has all those big numbers is once he breaks the pocket, he doesn't look just to run the football. He steps up, thinks about running, boom, I, I can throw, there's my man. He never lets his eyes leave the secondary. And he made Sean Williams, number 92, move away from Chris Boyer with that move toward the line of scrimmage. It looks like Malik Jackson, and that's his brother, Jameel, standing by him. Jameel, one of the reasons that Malik committed to come here to school. Of course, his mother know. didn't want these kids playing <laughs> against each other. Speaking of mothers, you bring this up to my mind. Uh, Ray Lucas yesterday, the backup quarterback, we're in a meeting, and he's got this, <laughs> he's got this pager on his hip. Hey, what are you, your girlfriend trying to keep close to college with him? It's his mother. She pages him. And Malik looks like he's going to be all right. <laughs> Lucas could have worn it tonight. He has not had one, uh, one down in combat yet. Jackson, uh, a huge free safety at over 230 pounds. And they can't afford to lose him in this game. You know, you wonder, because of the cramping situation, it is humid here tonight. On a grass field, it, it has a toll on players' fluids. Now able to get off under his own power. And Sean Smith, a junior, will come in to replace him at free safety. Smith, not a physical match, 6 feet, 175. Play action. Van Pelt sidearms it to Williams, and Williams is nailed. Vince Williams drilled by Marshall Roberts and Sean Williams. Van Pelt, we showed you a while ago how he broke the pocket, then he looked downfield. Look at the patience that he has. He knows that whenever you give a receiver four or five seconds to scramble, and he'll eventually will get open. You just got to keep your eyes open and look for them. Second and seven. The number's on Van Pelt, nearing 200 yards. Strong throw to the sideline, complete to Gels. Had some hum on that one, all the way across the field. Our Thursday night series will continue next week. Join us at 7.45. Chris Fowler, Leo, Lee Corso, and Craig James back in the studio to preview the college football weekend show, 7.45. That's with the kickoff show. Then we are in Lawrence, Kansas, and California will take on the Kansas Jayhawks, who just happen to be the leading scoring team in the country. How about that? From the Big Eight. Van Pelt again on play action, again being chased, throws on the run, complete sideline, gels at the 38-yard line. Dietrich gels with that great speed drives the secondary so deep that when he comes back, he's usually wide open. 
Well, and that secondary has got to maintain that because in a minute they'll go deep with him in just a moment. Look at him driving, selling, 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 stop, come back to the football, and then Van Pelt. Just amazing what he can do with the football. Nice throw. He's made several here in the second half. This pit has gone through more of a passing game. First and ten. The Panthers down by five. Martin trying to get outside. Roberts got a piece of him, and then Bellamy chased him out of bounds. What a courageous performance by Martin with that sore Achilles being able to come back and forth. And this, this kind of drive, getting into the ball game, will take its toll on Rutgers' defense. The next time that Rutgers gets the ball, they need to have six, eight, ten play drive to give their defense a break. It was the reverse situation in the first half when Pitt's defense was out there all the time and getting tired. Colicchio breaks a tackle into the secondary, still on his feet to the 25-yard line. First down, Panthers, a gain of 10. Doug Adkins, the strong safety, finally made the tackle. And when you get tired, when your mind begins to waver on you, the fatigue factor, you get sloppy in your assignments, you don't fill holes like you're supposed to, you don't wrap up, you don't pursue. Of course, Pitt's offensive line is so much bigger than the defensive line of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And a flag is down. And this one will go against the Panthers on first and ten. A lot of procedure calls tonight. Bill Myers, the offensive coordinator, unhappy with his team's lack of execution on that play. First and 15. And of course, the official's getting an earful, too. <laughs> First and 15 from the Rutgers, 30. Colicchio. About four on this one. Not quite back to the original line of scrimmage. Time becoming a factor here. 22 seconds to go, third period. And it's Rutgers 14 to 9 over Pitt. But the Panthers, certainly in the last three series, have looked much sharper on offense. They've mixed it up a little bit here. They've given Van Pelt the chance to throw the football, and he's opened it up with that deep ball to gels. Now the underneath game's a little bit better for him. We will go to the fourth quarter at Rutgers Stadium with the Scarlet Knights leading the Panthers 14-9. From Rutgers Stadium, a third quarter dominated offensively by Pitt with 224 yards on the strength of a 91-yard scoring bomb. From Van Pelt to Gels. Right now, the Panthers face a second and 11 from the Rutgers 25. the blitz. Van Pelt rolling away from pressure. Throws for the end zone. Bam! He picked it off. Intended for Junior Green. So Bellamy, who was burned so badly on the 91-yard touchdown pass, gets a measure of revenge. Bill Myers, Pitt's offensive coordinator, said he felt like that, that this was the best secondary in the Big East. They are put under pressure on this play because they are man-to-man. -man. They're having to stay back deep. He's got more time than he needed to throw the ball. Bellamy is there, not beaten like he was earlier to Dietrich Gell. So big break for Rutgers as Pitt was in scoring territory. Bellamy makes the pick. With 14.52 to go in the game, Rutgers has the ball and a five-point lead. Mitter back in a tailback. It's a nice job of following his blocks and gets about seven yards. Well, if you find a back like that, Craig, as you well know, who can set up the blocks and then follow them, you can really get a lot of yards without being touched. Because you do. you got to set those blocks up. That, you know, that guy out there is a blocker on the island, the fullback in front of you. He's got to have some help from, from behind. Oh. 
really a big series here. Rutgers, if they can do something on offense just to keep the defense off the field, they've done a good job. Mitter again, same play. Cuts it back again, first down. Ford is still on his feet, midfield. And caught from behind at the 42. How about the speed on Dell Seagraves, the linebacker? Holy cow. I mean, this guy is 6'3 and 240, and he just ran down tailback Craig Mitter. You talked about him setting up his block. Watch how he does it this time. He sees the block occur, gets inside. Vision. He knows where that ball that blocks coming, that the tackler's coming from. Once he gets back across the field, this is the old fatigue factor here. But Seagraves, the big man, is coming from behind. Oh, 41 yard gain. Mitter now up to 113 yards in this game. Presley gives him a breather and hit at the line of scrimmage. May have lost a half yard. Mike Kristofik, the nose tackle, makes the stop. This is the fourth quarter, and Rutgers, at the end of three, they all hold their hand up in the air saying fourth quarter. I don't like that. If you got to tell a kid that it's fourth quarter, you know, he's in trouble. This is the time that Doug Graver and the coaching staff have got to get their players ready to play and to go out and win the game. This is the hump time for Rutgers. Second and ten. They could get a field goal out of this. It would be great position for the Scarlet Knights. They would be up by eight. Play action, Forte with time. Throws complete. First down at the 20. Got it to Garantano. Chris Hupko made the tackle. The Reds beat the Braves again. And the Blue Jays do themselves a favor. They win it in 10 against Cleveland. Pirates in the Expos tied in the ninth. And this will be the Expos last shot at making up the ground in that head to head series. First down, Rutgers. Garantano now 94 yards on six catches. Forte sees the blitz, calls the play against it. Throws for Avina. Flag is down. That could be offensive interference. Lance Avina trying to get into position to make a catch. Panthers defense that beautifully. Well, Hupko and Lewis are breathing hard. I think Pittsburgh just got a terrible break. All right, here you go. You got him down here, Avina. These people are working. Somebody's got to go for the football. The wide receiver has got to have a chance, number 19. He's trying to get back oh. inside, but that's a tough call. That's an awful call. There's no way you can call that on Vernon Lewis. Vernon Lewis was in perfect position, got pushed twice by Avina. A huge break for Rutgers. First and goal for Rutgers. We hate to see it happen, too. First and goal from the five. Presley the tailback. Presley on the toss. Powering his way inside the two. Hayes Clark the first man there. Well, you can't play pass defense much better than that, Craig. You know, and you hate to see a call like that that might have a big outcome in the game. Because he was back there. He was, he in no way was interfering with a wide receiver. Look in the end zone now. Hey, Avina's trying to get back through there. Vernon Lewis has no clue what's going on. I mean, he's not, he's not interfering with a receiver. No way. Second and goal from the two. Presley. Impressive performances by the tailbacks of the Scarlet Knights, Mitter and Presley. 
and, and how big about play was Mitter 41 yards on this one. And how about the offensive line scoring with their men, pushing them in the end zone, giving him a crack so he can get there. Well, Charles Williams did everything he could, but just couldn't make the stop. Ball carriers, they can, they can give that boost by the way they run the football. They exemplify courage and taking it to a defense. Benistan for the point after. He's been perfect on three tries tonight. And Rutgers ups the count to 21 to 9. Presley with his second touchdown of the night. Bud Dry is one beer that drinks easy like a light and has real draft taste. So why not come around to something refreshingly different? Try Bud Dry. They say our personality traits are formed at an early age. Presenting the 3.1 liter V6 Rodeo from Isuzu. After all, growing up does have its rewards. Hey, get comfortable. A jillion tiny air bubbles make Comfort Tech lightweight and super flexible. Casual looks, the looks this dressy. Get comfortable. Get on from two yards out. But with the speed of Dietrich Gels and Van Pelt's arm, this, this game is nowhere close to being over. The Rutgers secondary may be slightly deeper on the next couple of series. Be interesting to find out from Dr. Punch about Malik Jackson, if he can come back in at free safety. Jermaine Williams waiting just outside the goal line for the kick of John Benistan. That is to the other side. Junior Green took it in the end zone. Flag is down. So is Green at the 30. We'll check the penalty. And that's the penalty we see on virtually every kickoff return these days. The illegal block in the back. Here's the storyline from Rutgers Stadium in New Jersey. Van Pelt has broken Marino's passing record, and Forte getting stronger, it appears, as the game goes along. Now over 200 yards, and Mitter over 100 yards rushing, including that 41-yard burst, the big play in that drive. But you can't forget the interference call, either. Pitt has now been stopped six times in Rutgers territory without scoring. I'll tell you, another storyline of this ball game is all the penalties that Rutgers has had against them. Tons, and they've survived them somehow. 12 for 99. And Pelton throw on first down. Throws the slant complete and got it to Gels. Check in with Jerry Punch. Guys, moments ago, the Rutgers coaches had to hold their breath when they saw Malik Jackson, their star free safety go down and clutch his left knee now the good news he's back in the game of course the good news it was simply he was kicked in the shin right below the knee came off put some ice on it he's one tough customer back in the ball game but certainly it could have been a major blow to the Rutgers defense back upstairs and they are thin that's one of the problems with building a program you usually don't end up with very much depth your frontline players can be terrific Pelt doing what he does best. Colicchio out of the backfield. He's got 11 yards and another first down. Still plenty of time to go in this game. 11:42. Sean Williams and Jameel Jackson make the tackle. Now, Craig, if you're on defense, you can't go completely soft. There's too much time. Oh, uh, great point. I, and we're going to watch now these next few plays because these guys are getting Rutgers defense getting so deep. Coons, the tight end, was wide open. You got Colicchio underneath. They've got to continue to play aggressive ball. Colicchio will get the carry. Sean Williams makes the tackle. Williams has shown a lot 
to me tonight. I mean, I was wondering, here's yeah. a Butkus Award candidate. Really, what kind of ball player is he? You know, Rutgers, big, you know, what's he going to do? He's shown everything in the world that you'd want to have in a player, and he's out here. He realizes this is national TV and that this is a chance for him to truly shine. And he has. Second and 11, Colicchio actually lost a yard on the last play. And Pelt with time, dumps it off, and incomplete. Coons, the tight end, couldn't hold it. If you joined us late, here's what you've missed. Rutgers has Garantano, a 33-yard catch from Forte. That was the only score in the first half. Pitt finally got on the board when Conley hit a 44-yard field goal third quarter. Rutgers answered with Presley on a screen pass from 58. And then Gels on a 91-yard bomb got Pitt back to within five. But Rutgers had an answer again at the end of an 80-yard drive. Van Pelt in this half, 11 out of 15, 192 yards. And Van Pelt will have to use a timeout. Clock stop, 10.43 to go in the ballgame. We'll be back in a moment. Pittsburgh 21-9, but Alex Van Pelt has the football. Third and 11. Pocket collapses around him as he throws deep in, complete intended for Junior Green. Good coverage, Tim Geckler, number three, back there with him. And pass from Green. Rutgers was down. expecting a lot. Now look at all the defensive backs out here. They've got people all over the field trying to cover these people. Only one Rutgers linebacker in the game right now. Nothing there for them. And good pressure from number 91, Keith Bryant. Marshall Roberts is back to take the punt of Theodoro. Roberts came into the game every 21 yards of return. And won't get much on that one either. Return of six after a punt of 38 from Theodoro, the senior from Edison, New Jersey. The National Hockey League is back on ESPN and our season premiere, what, three weeks? October 6th, the long-awaited debut. Eric Lindros comes in with the Philadelphia Flyers against the sensational Pittsburgh Penguins. We will have most of the Stanley Cup playoffs for you and every game of the Stanley Cup Finals on ESPN. Lace up the skates and be with us in three weeks. Rutgers football outside their own 30-yard line, and the clock is their best friend right now. Preston on the clock. Taken out of bounds, and that will stop the clock. No quarterback controversy tonight. That's the redshirt freshman Ray Lucas, who has not been on the field. What a game he had a week ago. Look at the numbers against Colgate. Led them to scoring drives five out of the six times he was in there. And a lot of people thought that he was going to be the quarterback. But Forte, I tell you what, the kid really sucked it up tonight and played hard. He played well. Now, Stan Ferris, the offensive coordinator, he says that before it's over with, all said and done, that Ray Lucas will be the best quarterback ever at Rutgers. Here's Presley, another young man with tremendous potential. He had, he had his legs cut out from under him that time. Solid tackle by Vernon Lewis. Taken down by Vernon Lewis. Clock running. Ten minutes, nine seconds to go. Rutgers by 12. Pittsburgh is going to need two touchdowns. Two down and five. And Rutgers just very content to work on the clock right now but they gotta be smart in what they do in their play calling and the way they run and execute their plays. They cannot slip mentally in the last 10 minutes of the game. Forte brings them out. Back to throw on first down. Another flag is down, intended for Stoll, a tight end, but under thrown will check the penalty. Really amazing that Rutgers is up by 12 when you consider all the mistakes they've made. Just a little procedural thing like that. Maybe a little of the anxious feeling within the players tonight, wanting to do more than uh, than they probably should. Very well could be. Against the offense, 
Illegal formation. Penalty was refused. Fourth down. Both teams really guilty of the penalties tonight. Rutgers, it seems, though, has had a lot of penalties come at them at times like this when they needed to control the clock and continue a drive, and it sets them back. So they turn it down to bring a fourth down, and McCauley is back. Lippitz may be looking at a rush this time. Back off. Another low kick. And McCauley goes to the sideline. Lost a handle on it again. The second one that's gotten away from him, but it appears the Panthers got it back this time with their own 28 yard line. 35 yard punt, no return. And Pittsburgh will have the football when we come back. 9 18 left in the game. Pittsburgh, a team they have never beaten. The series started in 1981. Pitt is 9 and 0. They are on the verge of being 9 and 1 in the series against Rutgers. Alex Van Pelt trying to pull it out again. Blanker screen, and now Davis will throw the option. Had a man wide open, well underthrown, and dropped by Jackson. And a flag is down. Boyer had three steps on everybody. But Davis threw it like a receiver throws a pass. And this will be interference against Rutgers. This is a Hail Mary pass. Now, the receiver, they're go well, you know, I got to tell you, that is more legitimate of a call than the last one. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, he has no chance to come back and catch the ball because Atkins blows him up. Number 10 just goes and lays the leather on him without playing the ball. But it looked like that ball was touched before there was contact, so that's going to be a controversial call, too. Very close. Certainly much closer than the other one. You got to look for the tight end. Coons has been open quite a bit up the scene. You got to throw the ball to him, let him make some plays for you, and that'll open up the outside game and a little bit deeper later on. Doug Graber arguing his case. Obviously lost it. Van Pelt play action under a lot of pressure. Floats it up. Did Boyer catch it? He did. What a grab and what a throw by Van Pelt. Holy cow. What a catch by Boyer. Andrew Beckett nearly had the sack. He throws this ball 25, 30 yards backpedaling, getting hit, and Boyer has the presence of mind. Oh, did he have possession? Juggled it a little bit. He hangs, he hangs, he hangs. He knows he's got to give his man time. And he takes it. He takes a good one, too. Good thing he can't a little extra weight. Boyer now six catches, 50 yards. That was sensational. Van Pelt given time. Dumps it to Williams out of the backfield. And Jermaine Williams staying on his feet down to the 25-yard line. Malik Jackson makes another tackle. Well, I know you don't want to throw all the time, but Van Pelt is so much fun to watch. He is so good. I I'm getting ready to say, why run the football when he has so much success throwing the ball? You do some control, short passes, so that it's not the same thing. You take a chance to throw the ball downfield. But Van Pelt is so mature that he gets back there, and he gives teams time and receivers time to get open. And he's gotten it to everybody. 212 yards in the second half for Alex Van Pelt under pressure again. Got away from the rush and a referee and then threw it out of bounds. Well, Van Pelt had to worry about two different color jerseys on that play. But that's a good call by Bill Myers there because he knows that Van Pelt is smart enough to throw the ball up in the nickel seats rather than throwing it downfield and taking a chance of it being intercepted or getting rid of him so he doesn't get sacked. Question here is play action. When they know you're going to throw, why do you still go ahead with the play action? 
Well, you just try to keep the linebackers tucked in there so that you can get somebody in the six, seven, eight yard zone to be open and maybe get a tight end to leak out into that flat with you while you roll to the right. Second and 10, both wide receivers go to the top of the screen. Van Pelt gels at the 20. This time kept well in front of the defense. Marshall Roberts makes Kills. the stop. Brought down by Roberts. Give him all the room he needs out there with that speed. Well, and at this point here, you have to consider going with a kitchen sink and blitzing everybody at Van Pelt and kind of rolling a little bit because they have not seen a lot of the blitzes. They did have the interception by Bellamy the last time they brought a lot of folks. But people who blitz Van Pelt have been burned for four years. He's got great vision. Third and four. And they're set to come. Everybody in Van Pelt. It picked up. Atkins. Van Pelt to beat, and the quarterback made the tackle. You called it, and it worked. They brought everybody but Coach Graber. When you come up inside, there's your man. He's going to come clean. And the problem is that they're just not in sync on the offensive line enough to pick him up. Van Pelt throws the pass, not really knowing what he was going to do with that. Did not show the maturity that you would have expected. And then Doug Atkins, number 10 over here, he goes clean by himself. He'll take a lot of ribbon now for letting that quarterback catch him. That's right. Van Pelt outweighs him by about 20 pounds. Ooh. Big break for Rutgers. Third turnover by Pittsburgh. Presley trying to go outside, wrapped up in a hurry by Hayes Clark who has long, looked stronger as the game has gone along. The second interception for Van Pelt. They've learned a lot here in the fourth quarter. Doug Graber has kept his ball club mentally going. They realize that they've got to stay in there and play hard. And that is, to me, that is as impressive as anything they've done tonight is playing well in the fourth quarter. And they've got a leg up on this one with 7.05 and counting. 21 to nine. Panthers down by two touchdowns. Presley hit again. It will be third and long. Now, if you're Rutgers offensive coordinator, do you get cute here or do you just say, hey, we'll run another 40 seconds off the clock? If I'm the coordinator on first down and 10, I throw the ball deep. Right then, I come out and I'm throwing it deep to let them know that, fellas, we're not letting up at all. You know, Stan, Parrot, he's over here. You know, he's up here, and here's the guy that, you know, he's going to buy dinner for everybody tonight if they win. But, you know, he scratches his head, what do I do? Better do he, he can't make a decision, so they're going to call timeout. Forte is saying, I'll take care of this. The play clock is running down. Down to three. Oh, look, how smart is this? Forte. Now, this kid hasn't played in two years, and he says, we're going to call a timeout, but we're going to let the play clock run down to one second before we do. Going to burn every tick off of there we can. Smart, smart play. Stay within the lines. The lines are our friends. Stay within the lines. The line are our friends. Introducing the world's first V6 crayon. Are, are you listening? The Isuzu Rodeo. Built to go way outside the lines. Honey, you know that little package they delivered this morning? Did you put it somewhere? Federal Express knows how it feels when you have to locate your package. Mommy needs it for a meeting. That's why Federal Express has a tracking system that can tell you where your package is. How about giving Mommy a hint? Of course, once it gets there, you're on your own. Oh, great. Federal Express. Henry, where are my keys? Our most important package is yours. You start it every morning. Start after start after start. When most of your oil is still down in the pan, you start metal-to-metal -metal contact. You start engine wear. Now help stop it with the latest breakthrough from STP. New engine treatment. It bonds right here. He can't get the play in in time. The play clock's at seven seconds, so they say call timeout. And he tells the ref, 
Not yet. Not yet. Now I'm watching the play clock. Four, three, two, one. Now I want a timeout. Thank you very much. It's down to six minutes and 11 seconds. The kid got seven more ticks off that clock, and who knows what seven seconds is going to do at the end of this. And I think that really exemplifies that he has succeeded tonight in enjoying the game yes, sir. And, and knowing what's happening. Third and 15. Forte throws and made sure it wasn't going to be caught by anybody but Brantley. So Rutgers fails to move it, but that's not the most important thing right now. They're up by 12. And Lippitz comes on to kick it away. And as poorly as Lippitz has punted tonight, I'd go in three deep in a safe punt type of situation so that your up backs can catch the ball at 25 or 30 yards if he hits it short. Chris Hupko is waiting at the 12-yard line. Pitt has not really put on an all-out rush yet. Here they come, and they didn't get there, and that's the best kick of the night. Hupko, fair catch at the 10-yard line. So the Panthers will start 90 yards away after a punt of 44. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Guys, Richard, freshman tailback, Bruce Presley behind me, now standing up. They were retaping his left knee. Apparently, he sprained it. The doctor is checking him, Dr. Tim Hosey, the orthopedist here at Rutgers, said he has a mild sprain to the medial collateral ligament, the inside ligament of the left knee. He should be fine, but he may not play anymore tonight. They're going to let him run a little bit, tape him, and if they need him, he might go back in, but probably not. Back upstairs. Jerry, back in the old days when uh, Craig was playing, <laughs> And you hurt a knee, they just said you hurt your knee, right? <laughs> yeah, baby. Put a little tape on it and go. That's you walk, you can play. Sean Williams cranking up to come after Van Pelt. Dumps it off to the fullback, Carl Hagens. And Hagens across the 20 to about the 25. Jay Bellamy made the stop. Our Wrangler players of the game will be coming up and have actually quite a few candidates tonight. Some outstanding individual performances. And with Van Pelt's arm, you can't really make a decision yet. He may take him down the field and score twice. 24 out of 37, 299 yards, but he has the two picks. Van Pelt to Williams, across the 30 to 31. Rutgers will give him all of those that they want as it just burns more time off the clock. George Stewart and Jameel Jackson again. Stewart with those casts on both hands. That's a guts and performance for him. There you see the clock. Pittsburgh needs two touchdowns. And Rutgers will have to use a timeout on defense. And that will not please the defensive coach. Stewart very unhappy. Only had 10 ball players on the field. And that will make them even less happy. 5.20 to go in the game. It's Rutgers by 12 games earlier in the season being critical. It's critical to the direction of the programs for this game. I mean, Rutgers goes to two and one. They beat Pitt for the first time in a Big East Conference game. It would be a huge win for their program. The same for the Panthers. If they lose this one, they're down to one and two. Oh and two in the conference. A little dump off to Hagens. He picks up about three. And they still have to play Notre Dame and Penn State and Syracuse. And where it really hurts you of your pit is in recruiting, and it helps you at Rutgers because now you get a little commitment from the kids. You get their interest level up, and it allows the coaches, once recruiting begins, to say, hey, come give us a shot. Third and three. Van Pelt is trying to keep the drive alive, and Jermaine Williams sort of half-heartedly reached the hand out for that one as it whistled by him. George Stewart in coverage. Uh, Stewart is not going to intercept too many tonight with all that plaster on there. If he does, he becomes our Wrangler player of the game. <laughs> Make him the player of the year. <laughs> here, let, let's see his hands. He's in the middle here. Can he, can he do it? Oh, no chance. Hit him in a club. Just, yeah, just hammer it, George. Fourth and three. The Panthers' last gasp here. Jermaine Williams, he's got to get past the line, and he does. First down. 
That's the same play they tried on third down from the left side. That time, what they're doing is Jermaine goes about four yards to the right side and then cuts back across the middle on a little in route. Uh, we're going to have to have a little uh, a clinic here for the Rutgers fans. A lot of people are leaving. they got to remember, they're ahead 21-9 to for one of the biggest games they've ever had here. They need to stay till the end and enjoy every minute of this. Van Pelt again under pressure. Throws and gels, who was just a sensational-looking receiver down to the 43. Marshall Roberts makes the tackle. Gels a sophomore out of Erie with blazing speed. A lot of times, guys who have that kind of speed do not have good hands or run good patterns. He does both. Seven catches, 177 yards for Gels. And Van Pelt trying to keep Pittsburgh alive with 420 left in the game. Out pattern to Kuhn, steps out of bounds to stop the clock after a gain of about three. You really see right now fatigue on the football field. Both sides of the ball just, just wallowing out there, trying to get walking back to the huddle. There's no sense of urgency from Pitt's offensive team. Rutgers really, maybe they're responding just to the way that, that Pitt's walking around. Ten times he's been over 300 yards in his career. Another school record for Alex Van Pelt. Before the season's over, he'll probably own all of them, except for touchdown passes. Dan Marino had 79 of at Pittsburgh. Good catch over the middle, but a short game for Coons. He's short of the first down. It'll be third in about a yard. The clock continues to run, nearing four minutes. This is a point in the game, though. Now you've got to run the 16-yard out. you got to find Gels either going 15, 16 out, or he's got to run the 20 in. Once again, Coons, they tried to get the first down. Incomplete, nearly picked off by Sean Williams who ran the pattern just as well as Coons did. But it stops the clock. Pitt has two timeouts left. 3.51 left in the ball game. And I mean, if they score here, they've got to go in and they've got to find a way to onside kick, get the ball back in their hands. But they need, this is one of those both teams kind of wallowing out there. Somebody's got to rise to the next occasion. Fourth and a yard. And they'll run for it with Jermaine Williams. He hasn't gotten it yet now. Second, third, even fourth effort, and he did. Boy, nice run by Jermaine Williams. Clock used to be stopped. Get to the line of scrimmage now, Pitt. Get up there. Van Pelt, get the call. Relay it on while they move the chains. Clock stop and get the next play going. Van Pelt a little exercise that he couldn't get the call that quickly. Directing traffic right now. Green and Boyer exchange sides of the field. Van Pelt under pressure, just got rid of it. And it's caught by Boyer at the 11-yard line. Nice catch, and boy, a lot of guts by Van Pelt. He knew he was going to get it and just hung in there. Sean Williams all over him, and that's the courage of a senior that's wanting to do it and get it done. 3.24 to go in the ballgame. Another first down for the Panthers. Van Pelt throws intended for Green incomplete. Coverage by Jay Bellamy. Pitt needs to score twice. Ball does get tipped here. Just deflected right there, and that was enough to keep it from either being a chance to catch the ball or pass interference. Van Pelt in this hand, 22 of 33, 290 yards. If you're Rutgers here, why not look at coming out and bringing everything? The last time it worked, forced him into an interception. Van Pelt with time over the middle. Williams down to the four. Again, Rutgers will give up the pass short of a touchdown because the clock continues to run. Luis Beto made the stop under three. Here comes the blitz. Van Pelt. Boyer. Touchdown. They're
there's a penalty marker down. Let's check it. It looked like interference against Roberts. But we've had a couple of strange interference calls tonight. And it will go against Roberts. Decline touchdown for Van Pelt. What courageous drive by the Panthers and Van Pelt. They will go for one point. Going for two would make no difference. And the decision that needs to be made now, do they trust their defense to go out and shut down Rutgers, or do they onside kick? Van Pelt saw the blitz immediately. One-on-one. -on -one. Give yourself enough room to get to the outside. Marshall Roberts, 22, just can't do it. He puts his hands on it. That's your pass interference. And a nice job of adjusting, watching the ball by Boyer and going up and taking it. 14 plays, 90 yards. It took more than three minutes off the clock, however, which is what Rutgers wanted. Sean Conley for the point of He's got it. 21 to 16. The Panthers closed to within five. Now keep in mind they have two timeouts left. All right, now the line needs to just kind of bunch up here because they're going to come in here with a blitz. They've learned from the past. They've been hurt twice by the blitz. Now they come in. They just kind of pick everybody up and give Van Pelt enough time to make the one-on-one -on -one throw to the corner. Mismatch in size and jumping ability. Now, Craig, if you're the Panthers, what do you do now? 2.42 left. You've got two timeouts left. Do you go for the onside kick or do you kick it deep? Well, I would, if I'm pit and I feel like I've got confidence in the deep, I kick the ball deep. Because you go down and you stop them, you're going to have good field position. I don't think that you take a chance at this point in the game because right now they've got two timeouts remaining. You kept, kick the ball deep and see what you can come up with on defense. Sports Center coming up next. Keith Olbermann and Dan Patrick standing by. They'll update you on the pennant races in Major League Baseball. And Elvis Gerback out of this weekend's game, along with a preview of Washington against Nebraska that you'll be able to see on ESPN. Great potential for a great ball game. Then followed by baseball tonight. Tom Mees and Ray Knight standing by for that one. Panthers still talking it over on the sideline. Rutgers on the field waiting. Sold out Rutgers Stadium on campus. They have never beaten the Panthers. This is the 10th game in the history of this series. Well, you got to remember now also that they are kicking from midfield because of the pass interference. So the onside kick wouldn't be that bad against you in terms of field position. Get on it. If it goes to the end zone, I want it down. Exactly. So maybe you go ahead and you roll the dice. At this point now, I'd go ahead and I would I'd do the onside. Bruce, Walker and Presley Bruce, are deep, Bruce, but five men up at the 40-yard line as Rutgers expecting an onside kick. Instead, they kick it away and knock it to the back of the end zone. Well, even if they try the onside kick, uh, the best Rutgers would have been at is their own 35. Or you pooch kick the thing, you kick it down in the corner to about the five-yard line with a little hang time and allow your team to get out and converge and maybe keep them inside the 20-yard line when they start. Amos Jones and Hackett, uh, Paul Hackett, the head coach, talking about that. Of course, they had quite a bit of time to talk it over before. But as it is... You've given Rutgers the ball at the 20-yard line. An onside kick attempt, the only game, 15 yards on. And now Forte will try to come up with something to give him a single first down. Play action. Holy cow. And Forte is going to be sacked back at the 15-yard line. Jeff Esters will get the sack. And now Pitt will use a timeout to stop the clock with 2.32 to go. How about that for a call, Coach? Huh? I don't mind that at all, but if you're going to do that and roll to that side, you are just wholly putting your faith in Garitano getting open one-on-one -on -one to that side. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor? It has been a very humid night here in Piscataway, New Jersey, and we've seen another victim of the cramping here on the Rutgers sidelines. Forte, the quarterback, just moments ago, limped on the field, was complaining of some cramping in both calves. 
has now come to the sidelines. In fact, he was trying to stretch the calves out. Brian Forte, the starting quarterback, and they have been icing the calves. I talked to a couple of the doctors and said, we've never had cramping like this ever in the Rutgers program. Maybe it's humidity. They've been pushing a lot of fluids, but obviously they have Forte here on the sidelines. They are working on his left calf right now as he's drinking some fluids and talking to head coach Doug Graver back upstairs. Hey, that rubbing does absolutely no good. All that does is makes your muscles sore the next day from them rubbing <laughs> on your heart. But that might explain why Forte didn't have the ability to continue running all around the corner, didn't have confidence in his, in his legs. They may have cramped up. And... What a time for the redshirt freshman to come in. Ray Lucas checks in a quarterback with Forte on the sideline with cramps in his legs. And Lucas will come in on second and 14, and they literally had to take Forte to the bench. He is whipped. Lucas on the toss to Presley. Presley with a great cut. 30. He might go all the way. Presley caught from behind at the 23 yard line. Oh, what a run. Three yards. That's how you take the pressure off of Lucas coming into the ball game. Watch the setup block here. Bounce in, do get outside and go. This is a great run by Presley, who I think earlier we were talking about him being questionable coming back in the ball game. And he has a first down at the pit 25, 220 to go in the game. There is one timeout left for Pitt. That may have iced it. And Doug Graber thinking he may have the biggest win of his coaching career. Presley, whoa. Greetings five yards deep as Charles Williams saw it coming and got there about the same time Presley did and Forte being worked on. But he did his job tonight, a young man with tremendous pressure on his shoulder. Pulled from a game last week against Colgate. You can see his uh, career at Rutgers flashing before his eyes, but he came out tonight and did the job. 14 out of 27, 207 yards and two touchdowns. Doug Graver said, well, you know how big a game this is. We're on national television for the first time, playing under the lights at Rutgers Stadium. We'll have a new stadium in a year or two as soon as they can start construction. He was uh, he worked so hard along with everybody else from the university to get the funding from the state to get them a new stadium. They don't want to play at the Meadowlands once a year is fine but they want the home field advantage. You can't blame them for that. And you need it in college football. Oh, you got to have your fans. It's got it's collegiate. You bring everybody to the campus 45,000 seats that they're going to have and they're ambitious they're hoping they can play a ball game here late next year in the new stadium but it's going to be neat we've seen the drawings and it's going to be a it's a, a great opportunity for rutgers to truly get on the map oh it'll be beautiful second and 14 rutgers just trying to work on the clock hold on to the ball presley goes down under the blitz and now pitt cannot stop it again 25 second clock so Rutgers can't burn all the time off unless they get a first down and they're facing a third and long here. Now, this is where you wanted to maybe on first or second down use Lucas's legs and do the sprint out or the run around to the corner and have him meet with the option to run the football with his ability and speed and fresh body or throw to Garantano. He's the freshest guy out there, that's for sure. Looks clean and good. Quarterback draw. This kid has great athletic ability. Down to the 34-yard line. Here's Jerry Punch. Guys, work continues here on the Rutgers bench with Brian Forte. He came to the sidelines a moment ago. We were talking about the cramping in his left leg. Then his right leg cramped, both arms cramped, his abdomen cramped. Basically, he just absolutely seized over in severe pain. They drug him to the bench. They have ice on his abdomen. They pulled his pads off, ice on both legs. The same thing happened to him against Boston College, so they'll... They're, they're trying to figure out what the problem may be. They're going to check his electrolytes, try to get some fluid in him, and try to prevent this from happening down the road. But right now, he's a little more comfortable than he was about a minute and a half ago. Back upstairs. All right. Thank you, Jerry. It's I great think, having a doctor down there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the doc. Hey, I think that it's a case of the kid not playing for two years, and his body's just not yeah. used to that kind of tempo. 
very well could be and a very humid night tonight and Rutgers lets the play clock run down they'll take the five yard delay penalty which will move the ball back to the 39 yard line with 53 seconds to go and Alex Van Pelt saying give me the ball back one more time he's a terrific college quarterback Sports Center coming up right after our broadcast Lippitz will come on to punt let's see if Pitt will go after it Lippitz job is just to kick it doesn't matter where or how far but just get it out of there and Chris Hupko is waiting at the 10 yard line maybe to get a return and Lippitz hangs it high just into the end zone good kick by the sophomore from Spring Valley New Jersey our Wrangler players of the game from Pittsburgh a tremendous performance from Dietrich Gels seven catches 176 yards the touchdown came on a 91 yard bomb and he has tremendous speed very good hands and runs great routes and Presley from Rutgers our Wrangler player of the game rushed for 59 67 receiving yards two touchdowns Pitt with 46 seconds left no timeouts they need a touchdown a field goal won't help Van Pelt has it knocked down at the line of scrimmage and Charles Williams was the man who got a hand on it Williams I said Charles Williams. That's Ibrahim Washington, the nose man. Maybe the smallest nose man in, uh, in the East. 245 pounds. Tough situation here for Van Pelt. They'll give him the short one. He needs more than that. Three man rush. Dumps it. Trying to get gels, and that's a good idea after the 29-yard line. If you can't get him deep, throw it underneath and let him run with it. It's not a first down. Third and a yard. Van Pelt got the first down, got it to Junior Green. The clock will stop while they reset the chains. Can't stop it with the timeout. They burned them. And now you either throw it deep or get it out of bounds with 12 seconds left. Throw it down the middle and deep. And he'll kill the clock so he has a chance to talk about it. Nine seconds to go. You figure you got a couple of shots at Hail Mary now. Well, he can get it there. Oh, man, can he? You already saw him throw it 55 yards on a line. And Gels can get down there in about uh, three and a half seconds. <laughs> Got to have plenty of protection. A lot of times an offensive line relaxes when they feel like they're only going to have three people rushing them. That's really when you got to get together as a unit, make sure that you pass them to each other and keep them out there and give him the four or five seconds that he needs to get it down to the end zone. Van Pelt in the second half, 25 of 38, 328 yards. The fans on their feet. Nine seconds between a Rutgers win, the first ever over Pitt. Van Pelt will not throw the Hail Mary, throws incomplete. And the clock shows five seconds left. Now they don't have a choice. Well, what he wanted to do there was make a completion at the 35-yard line that would have given him a little easier shot into the end zone. Yeah, he's got to go to it now. And the Rutgers sideline, these guys will have their hearts in their throats. They have played so well tonight. You don't think they're a little tight? Comes down to one play. Trips left. Gels overthrown. The game's over. Okay, baby, good job, man. All right, all right. 
A big night for the Rutgers football program for the first time ever. They beat Pitt. Our final score, Rutgers 21, Pitt 16. For Craig James, Jerry Punch, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Piscataway, New Jersey. Sports Center is next.